I'm not depending on my iPad because the time is totally off. I do. I thought they were, I thought they could have corrected themselves. If I go according to the time of my iPad, the meeting would be finished. Oh, <laughs> <Let's> fifty nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's back to this guy. Kind of put on the Should correct. We are live. Are we six thirty? Yeah. In one minute. In one minute. Okay. No. My God, uh, Madam Mayor. Pardon? Is that one of the logs? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. And I can see it's 6.30, like we're <laughs> away. We're 6.30. Okay, well, we might as well start. We're all here. Start by saying good evening. Bonsoir. Welcome to our, our virtual council meeting. Bienvenue à notre réunion virtuelle du conseil. Before starting, I would just take this opportunity to provide uh, recognition, rendre hommage à Monsieur Marcel Labbé. Uh, C'est avec tristesse d'avoir appris son décès uh, le 11 de novembre à l'âge de 95 ans. Wow. Monsieur Marcel Labbé a déménagé à Sturgeon Falls en 1957 avec sa conjointe et a élevé sa famille ici dans la communauté de Sturgeon. Monsieur Labbé a été un conseiller municipal à compter de 1964 et pour 31 années consécutives. Sa contribution avant la réalisation de mes projets tels que la reine de Sturgeon Falls, le complexe, le centre récréatif, l'hôtel de ville avec l'édifice et l'emplacement de Statistique Canada et a œuvré auprès de mes comités et de conseils d'administration. So I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, provide tribute to Monsieur Marcel Labbé. It is with the sorrow learning of his death on November 11th at the age of 95. Monsieur Marcel Labbé moved to Sturgeon Falls in 1957 with his wife, Jane, where they raised their five children and he became part of the community fabric. Monsieur Marcel Labbé was a member of council in 1964 and served for 30 consecutive, 31 consecutive years. He was involved with the realization of several community projects, such as the Sturgeon Falls Arena, the recreational complex, uh, the town hall building with Statistics Canada as a main tenant. And he was also a member of various committee, committees and local boards. I'd ask if everyone would stand for a few seconds so we can provide tribute, the reconnaissance of Monsieur Labbé, and provide a few moments of silence. Thank you all. On procède avec l'agenda l'ordre du jour. Are there any declaration of pecuniary interest? Aucune déclaration d'intérêt pecuniaire. None? We have a mover and a seconder. Leo? Chris? He's moved by Councillor Mallette and seconded by Councillor Fisher. Be it resolved that the agenda for the meeting of council held on November the 17th, 2020, be adopted as presented. 
All in favor? Carried. Adopté. On procède avec comité. We proceed with committee. And the first committee on the agenda is planning, planification. I'll pass it on to the chair, au président, conseiller Denis. Thank you, Madame Mayor. Um, as you all had in your package, we have a list of uh, properties that are uh, owned by the West Nipissing Municipality. Uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Does anybody have any questions on that report? Or, uh, there's no questions. It's pretty clear, I guess. What, okay, uh, uh, Councillor uh, Lees. Merci, uh, Conseiller Denis. Oui, merci beaucoup, Mel. Uh, thank you very much. I think it's uh, it's really good to have. I was wondering now that we have that, is it possible maybe to uh, look at every land that we own that uh, to start with residential and put them together and see what we can do uh, with that? Because I think um, we might be, you know, there's a, it's assessment. If they can, uh, we can sell them and get money from it. It's going to be for assessment for the municipality. After I realize there's a lot that uh, not much that can be done because it's uh, already occupied or something. But uh, I know there's a few land that is vacant and that uh, it's residential and. Um, there's industrial, so I don't know if you can. Uh, it, it's if it's possible just to do a summary, and bring it back, Mel, and uh, then we, maybe we can decide to see if some of them it can be because I yes okay I know you want to talk but okay go for it. Me? Well, yeah, you're. I know. I was just going to say, just you you'd like uh, including waterfront as well. Yeah, everything that uh, it could be that could be developed. That could be developed and that could be, uh, we can't decide what we got to do with it. So I think it's, I, I did not realize, I was told there were a lot, but I did not realize that we have as many uh, vacant lots. So, I mean, uh, there's potential there and uh, so we need to look at it. So uh, is it possible? Is it a big job, Mel? Well, it, uh, it's not a huge job. It'll be a little bit of a research project because a lot of what is assessed as residential uh, Madam Chair, is actually underwater or, um, you know, not accessible from the road. So it's just, or maybe not big enough. It's just uh, going through the list and peeling them out, the residential from, from what's in there. It, it's not a, it's not a huge job. No. Okay. Well, like I'm not expecting that next week. So, I mean, uh, just maybe we'll be, it will be good because we, uh, even for the, the economic development, if there's, you know, a potential for something and, uh, and just for, even for the municipality, I mean, it's we might we might be sitting with uh, assessment, and uh, because things got to get tight, and uh, we might need to sell it. And why not sell it? And so they can build something, and then we can have the assessment coming to the pocket of uh, the municipality. So, thank you, Mel. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Fisher. Uh, yeah. Column, it doesn't seem to, well, I guess what unit is that supposed to be? And and it just seems out of whack, like in some cases, it, you know, a frontage 140, depth 110, but area 0.36. And then in other cases, the next one, but you can see what I mean by the, the first two on the list. And just to, just wonder what's up with that column. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, MPAC isn't known for their um, accuracy. Most of that is taken from the MPAC assessment and uh, they, there's often um, mistakes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on this report? Okay, we'll send, okay, that's uh, it. Conseiller uh, Denis, Madame Mayor. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Okay, Madame Mayor. Um, I uh, concur. I think it's a great idea that um, if there'd be an opportunity to have the list of all the residential lots that can be developed and that we um, advertise those lots or even post them on our website uh, to encourage development, uh, that's a great initiative. Um, I'd also like to see, and hopefully that council would um, uh, appreciate the fact of having some type of policy 
for the usage of vacant land um, owned by the municipality. Right now, um, we have vacant land that we own that can be used for any purpose. And there's no control mechanism to be able to, um, uh, uh, for its usage in my, and I'll give you an example. Um, what if there were uh, parked vehicles that would, uh, could be an environmental issue and um, would have a negative impact in the neighborhood. So I'm just wondering if that, if policies do exist and if we can adopt a policy where we have a control where people who want to use it, no problem, but at least we have uh, something where we have control on identifying what the usage would be and knowing that um, it's not gonna be forever because if the lot is sold, well then um, individuals are not caught off guard. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think uh, Jay wants to comment on that, Jay. Simply if somebody is using uh, our land, we, we often give a little bit of leeway for people who are just kind of stealing a bit of property adjacent to theirs and that happens all over. But if there's something that's problematic, we, uh, we communicate to them and ask them to remove their property. It is ours, so it, it becomes trespass. Um, I would, uh, I would uh, agree though that there's no consistency uh, with respect to allowing it so we just kind of look the other way but when it becomes problematic we do uh, and have uh, fairly often um, ask people to remove uh, their uh, their uh, their stuff if it's a nuisance okay thank you, uh, thank you jay um, any other comments on this uh, i think we should i think we should have a policy and uh, that we treat everybody the same if we uh, ask somebody to remove a shed and we don't have a policy, it's hard to uh, support for our bylaw officers to uh, enforce. I think we should have some sort of policy. Madam Mayor. And subsequent, subsequent to the report, um, I've seen that in different areas, we have access to waterfront properties. And I know that in the past, there was a report that was uh, provided to Council of the Day outlining the list of um, access to water from the properties that we owned. Um, I'm wondering if that specific report can also be provided back to Council. Yep, yeah, no problem. We still okay. have that. Okay. Um, and, and just as information, Mr. Chair, I do know that the Economic Devel Development Authority Committee was also interested in obtaining the list of vacant properties uh, that the municipality owns uh, to help them out in defining their own strategic plan on being able to um, uh, study the matter further and define opportunities for investment. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, uh, Melody, for a job well done. It's an extensive list. I didn't, I didn't think we had that many properties, but well done. Any okay. other uh, issues? Okay, I'll pass it back to the Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we move on to the next committee, uh, Economic, um, Economic, Economic Development. And uh, the one item on the agenda is pertaining to Dutri Sat property. Uh, there was a delegation that we received from Mr. Stuart Seville, um, and his delegation was threefold. Uh, there was the issue of the, he called, he made reference to the Sturgeon Falls waterfront reclamation proposal. Uh, there were three items that were listed on the documentation that was shared to council. Uh, just as um, information purpose, the first item was the warehouser property, which council agreed uh, unanimously to uh, have our CEO pursue the, um, the subject matter and to proceed with negotiation. Number two was the uh, conservation area where it would be acquisition of Dutrisac property. And the third item uh, had to deal with the Sturgeon Falls Municipal Beach at the end of Maine and requesting to uh, invest funds um, 
to make uh, that location better. So the subject matter here is identified due to the SAC property. And I'm wondering if our CEO has an update pertaining to uh, subsequently or pre prior to the delegation meeting with Mr. Seville. Jay? Uh, actually, there's no update. So um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit slow here. I froze. Uh, I, uh, there's, there's no, there's really no update. Uh, this is an idea that uh, an individual has. I think the idea, the individual has uh, a group of other interested individuals, and uh, the general uh, point that they want to make is that they would like to acquire that property for uh, public use, uh, and uh, you know, so there hasn't been any discussion. If you want, I can give you a bit of a background. Uh, with that property. That property, I guess, has been vacant for a few years now. Council will remember, I have the documentation here. Melanie, uh, feel free to jump in because I might, be, might not be that quick. Uh, the, the, um, the, the, the property, uh, we, we went and had a look at it and spoke to the present owner uh, at the day and council of the day uh, decided that it was more than they wanted to uh, to purchase uh, and more than they wanted to handle. Uh, that property since then has been severed waterfront. There's two uh, there's two lots waterfront, uh, so they severed it uh, and split it in the middle. And I also understand that they've uh, carved out three uh, additional residential lots on the north side. So the issue, uh, you know, uh, that, that has to be discussed is, is do you want to entertain this opportunity? Uh, and uh, if so, how? Uh, and so my um, view is that, um, you know, you can get whatever funding for COVID, uh, you know, that, that would help you in acquiring it. Uh, but as you know, with Minnehaha Bay, that is really only a start and really only half a battle. The, uh, and I'm not trying to be negative, but the issue is, uh, you know, A, acquire it, B, convert it. What are you converting it to? So what discussion needs to happen in the community for what you want to have there? Uh, and then C, the sustainability of it, what the maintenance is of it, uh, and how are you planning on funding the ongoing uh, maintenance of it, and uh, and so we have very little information uh, in terms of quantifying those three issues, and also quantifying uh, the need. I mean, there's a hypothetic need uh, that uh, we would love to have access to our lakes, and as much access to our lakes, uh, the better. But that also has a cost, and uh, so we we uh, my view is you would want to uh, if you're going to pursue this. I think a full feasibility study business plan, uh, A, quantifying all of the aspects, including the demand for it, uh, to, uh, to have a look at that. So that, that, I guess that's my only, that those are my only thoughts at this point. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna do a round table and just find out what's the opinion or um, information that they'd like to share in the subject matter, Conseil uh, Yvonne. You know, Generally, I, what I do is I speak to others about the, the project in question and get a, I try to get a, an idea as to how people feel about it. And unfortunately, the, the, the main issue is obviously the costs. Uh, and what, uh, and what again, and I have to agree with Jay with respect to what do we, you know, the cost of, of purchasing it and the cost of developing it and putting it in place. Um, uh, you know, my general feeling is that it, it's, I'm not quite ready for that part. I, I, you know, I would shy away from that, uh, that idea. I certainly would either, I'd rather put more money on the, on the beach up uh, north on the, on the Viv, or on the Stern River and, uh, and, and, and leave that one aside because uh, there's, there's a lot involved here and, uh, you know, you'll be dealing with neighbors and, you, you know, we'd be getting forever complaints uh, and it's it's the cost that's the, you know the, it's a factor. The cost is a factor, obviously. Although uh, you know we do have property on the lake. Maybe these are avenues that we should look at. There's some not far from you know on Lac du Mille, I guess, and uh, it's something that we could look at as well. But uh, in essence, was, after speaking to others, it's just that I felt that some of them people didn't think it was a good investment. So I would prefer to put more money on 
on the one in the on the Sturgeon River. Okay. So thank you for that, Mattis. Thank you. Cosi Chris. So I like the idea of, um, of uh, having a, a lakefront park, beach, uh, or, or whatever. Like uh, uh, North Bay uses their lakefront to, to great effect, but uh, I mean, I'm in agreement that uh, we need uh, we need to understand how much it's going to cost. We need to understand how much it's going to cost over time and feasibility. And do we have a it, 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 to be comfortable? It needs more. I need more flesh on the bones. I, I guess I kind of agree with what Jay is saying that we need more information. Uh, but generally speaking, I, like we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of lakefront in the municipality. I don't know how much we own ourselves, but we don't make use of it uh, the same way other communities do, in my view. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Kosi Broly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I'm I'm in total agreement with what Councillor Yvonne just mentioned. Uh, the feeling that I'm getting from this area here, speaking with with the resident, they're not in favor of this. So I would have to decline to pursue this uh, this endeavor. Thank you, Councillor Leo. Yeah, thank you, Member. Yeah, I think the idea is, is is a good idea. It's not a bad idea until we get further maybe a feasibility study. I mean, we don't we should not. Put a lot, a ton of money into it, but I mean, not just not shut it down, but uh, maybe have some more ideas about about the uh, about the property. But like Jay said, it was already severed uh, pieces so far, so I don't know what's left. But I mean, I I think we should look at it further. Thank you. Thank you, Kosi Dan. Yes, uh, like, first of all, I'd like to commend uh, uh, Stuart for, uh, for bringing this to our attention because I think it has, 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 has merit. Uh, however, the, the, the point that our CAO is uh, recommending is that, uh, you know, that we do a feasibility study, uh, you know, there, there'd be a business case uh, put together to see, you know, what, what's the ins and outs of it. And then that way, uh, if, if it makes sense, then we'd have access to the lake because like Councillor Chris said, uh, we, don't, we don't work on the fact that we have a beautiful lake that's right next to us and we don't, uh, we don't uh, promote that. So uh, I think the thing is, is I think what we should be doing is looking at a feasibility study, uh, if need be a business case, bring it back to us and then we can, we can look at it from there. Conseil Denis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, my position is going to be clear. I'm totally against that. I don't think we really need a beach. We have, uh, I think each ward has its own beach. River Valley has the Tomogamy River, River, and Werner has a clear lake, and Field has clear lake, and Crystal has Tomico Lake, and we have in Werner, we have uh, Saint Jean. And so there's access to a, to a beach or at least water. The West Arm is the same thing. It's a beautiful country, but uh, there's no need for a beach for uh, Sturgeon Falls. I, I, I don't see my residents up here in Laving and Monetteville using a beach in Sturgeon Falls. So I think we're just uh, pandering to a, a select few. And I don't think that's uh, the good use of taxpayer dollars. We have the Chateau coming up. We have, uh, uh, what else do we have? Uh, we'd like, I'd like to see the water in Werner, which is more pressing than a beach. I have a bridge in Wolseley Bay that's missing 600 grand and I can't get the money. So I think there's a lot more pressing issue than a beach in Sturgeon Falls. That's my opinion, thank you. And I don't agree that we should spend the money on a feasibility study. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, the idea, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I would see a private investor, not the municipality, get involved with that. We already have beach that we uh, like. For example, the one that we have in Sturgeon on the river that we we could not approve the thirty thousand uh, dollars that was projected in the the 
the budget for it and uh, we have other beach that we couldn't maintain. I think that would be something that we need to look at plan that uh, wherever we have a beach, we should try to, to, to do something. I know there's been work done at the, the one I was walking and I saw those big block and then I went, there was a lot of sand. So I did a little bit of inquiry and uh, they were digging a little bit apparently and there were four loads of sand. Uh, so obviously there's money spent there which I, I'm not saying that I disagree. I'm just saying that we have to look at it. And as far as access to the lake, we do have a lot of access to the lake. I mean, and there's a lot, and that's what uh, one of the recommendation was direction to mail is to bring back a copy of the waterfront and see what we can do as far as access. You know, everybody on the lake have a dock, have access. I mean, uh, as far as public beach, I know it would be great to have a nice beach. Will it attract more tourism in, in, in uh, West Nipissing? And first of all, the beach in Ditrizac would be in Springer because it's not surgeon. But just a little bit of clarification, it's in West Nipissing. I don't, uh, I don't think it will attract because we have, they have beautiful beach in, uh, in Sudbury and in North Bay. So I don't think with people would book, book three week in Sturgeon for a waterfront beach and, uh, and uh, spring year or West Nipissing. So uh, I don't agree with spending money. I don't think it's up to us. If uh, some private investor wants to do the, the legwork and wants to do a feasible uh, study, I don't think the municipality should be paying for that. It could be a big project. They could do, be doing a lot. I, and I don't think it's the responsibility of uh, the municipality. We're already looking and buying a lot to try to do something, which is, uh, I, I, it's in the word. So I, I don't agree of, uh, if they want, they want to do it, I don't have a problem with the municipality at this point of time. I don't think we should, uh, we should even entertain that at this point of time. And, and this time of budget time, uh, it's, it's not, uh, we have so many other cats that, oh, they say that they show a fouetté en français, là. Je sais pas comment tu peux traduire ça en anglais, là, mais... So, c'est ça qui est mon point de vue. Merci. Okay, so, if I summarize uh, what I heard is that we have three councillors that would be interested in pursuing a feasibility study. Four identified no. Uh, there was the inference of investment at the Sturgeon Falls Public Beach. Uh, there were comments that were made that there's already been investment expenditures uh, to um, improve that beach. And um, to also, we're going to get the inventory list of all uh, waterfront properties, which provides access either to the river or to lakes. So am I summarizing everything accurately? Yes. And if there's no objection, it means yes. So um, the idea is excellent. However, due to financial issues and need, uh, priorities have been identified otherwise. So uh, moving forward with the delegation of uh, Mr. Seville, uh, we all agreed for Warehouser and that Warehouser would remain on the agenda on a monthly basis. So I'm just gonna ask the CEO, is there an update regarding to the dialogue with the actual company pertaining to the acquisition of that set property? We're in regular dialogue. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm pre we're in regular dialogue. When you commented on a monthly basis, I don't know if those of you who are around with uh, Warehouser, uh, 15, 20 years ago, but I, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm uh, reticent to provide things on an agenda to say nothing. Uh, that's why agendas, uh, uh, you know, we end up uh, having to sleep over. Uh, so there's going to be a long process. There's still some environmental uh, uh, issues that I indicated. Uh, not that there's environmental issues with it, but warehousers agreed to forward over their studies. That's going to take time. They're renewing that. So I'd ask uh, council and the community to be patient. Uh, I probably interacted with uh, warehouser in Washington state three or four times just this week. Uh, so it's an operational file and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully by the spring we'll be able to uh, transfer the asset. Okay, no, just that update is greatly appreciated because I know there was a lot of excitement and momentum pertaining to the acquisition of the property. So um, 
No, that's appreciated. Uh, just knowing that uh, things are moving forward. Um, so that basically does conclude the portion of this committee. Now we move on to the next committee, which would be Social Services and Health Service Sociaux et Santé. And I'll pass it on to the chair, Conseiller Leo. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, we have a request for um, the community sharp bins on, on John Street. So I'll open up the floor. Uh, uh, I'll do, do a round table. So I'll start with, uh, I guess, uh, Councillor Yvonne. Thank you, uh, uh, Leo. Appreciate that. Uh, listen, uh, I think uh, the initiative here is 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 good. Uh, we you know we we already have one area where we we do have a, a, a bin, and I think it's working fairly well. Uh, unfortunately, we know where the why they're, we're doing this. It's, it's because of the situation we have in our community with regards to uses of jugs. Uh, we all wish that uh, there was a we didn't have to have to look at it in this way and that there was no usage of drugs at all, but that's something that uh, we, we have to live with. Uh, I know the OPP are doing what they can to enforce the, the laws pertaining to this. I think uh, insofar as they've done a great job so far, uh, but uh, we've had people that are deeply concerned with certain areas of the municipality and uh, would wish that uh, we could uh, have more enforcement with regards to that. But I mean, uh, you know, the, it's like everything else. You, they do what they can when they can. Uh, it's something that we can't, you know, we, we it's something we, we, we'd like to tell them what to do, but we can't, unfortunately. And uh, that's, you know, I think they're doing a good job. And it's unfortunate that we do have to have these bins, but uh, I do agree. Let's put some bins. I'd sooner have them have the needles in the bin uh, other than in the parks or on the grounds. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Councilor Yvonne. Uh, just for a question, I don't know if you can answer this. Uh, what's the, what was the cost for the first bin run uh, next to uh, Michelle sure Lake? What's the yearly cost? Anybody answer? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, yes? The, the cost for the acquisition is covered by the health unit. Yes. But the cost, cost for the installation. Uh, is borne by the municipality. However, the bin that was installed on Main Street, we did not do a foundation, a cement foundation. We put it along the wall. So there's an opportunity here. I'm not too sure if there's going to be a cement base required or if they're going to be able to fix it along the wall. So it all depends on the installation. There might or there may not be any cost. Hey, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Chris. Uh, so I, I'm not against uh, another uh, adding a, another one, but I, I would have a few questions. So do we have stats that say we, in fact, need a second bin? Um, I would question its location because to my mind, and perhaps I'm wrong, but that's just a very short walk to the where the other bin is anyway. Um, and, you know, I... Somebody, somebody mentioned to me today that for the entire of North Bay, they're just installing one bin. And if that's true, that's 50,000 people. And I would question, do, do, we, it, it, do we need this bin is a question. Because, and, and, um, because there is a financial impact to the municipality, like they, they, we pay for emptying and disposal and whatever. And I'd, I'd like to know that, yes, that other bin is maxed out. Um, there is a definite need and this is the right spot. This is sort of the way I see this. I'm just reading a letter that says put another bin um, and we'll pay for it. You guys take on the, the maintenance, but do we really need it? So that would be that would be my input. Could we get more information and, and is there a genuine need? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Chris. Uh, Councillor Rowley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I'm I'm I'd say the same thing too is uh, if North B's got one bin for 50,000 people and we have 6,000 and we need two. So I'd, I'd like to have a study seeing if we need a second one. And also if, if the first bin is, is full, then maybe we could empty it more often instead of installing another bin, just an idea. But I, I, I would like to get more information on this. please. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Rowley. Councillor Dan? Uh, just to uh, answer your question, uh, Mr. Chair, in regards to the cost, 
the health unit does supply the bin box, uh, but we are uh, responsible in uh, in emptying the the uh, the, uh, the box. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alyssa. Uh, it's about six thousand five hundred dollars per year. Uh, if you watch the news a bit in North Bay, you'll notice that North Bay don't have a bin yet. Uh, there was a lot of controversy because, in fact, um, the city of North Bay invests a lot in the um, uh, return. Uh, when, you, when you return uh, a needle, you, uh, you get a $5 voucher for a percentage of them. And uh, they, what they did there is they landed on having one and they're going to put it at the... Uh, uh, the Nipissing Counseling Center in North Bay, just across the street from Town Hall. And they're going to take the money that they were investing in the return uh, 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 needle uh, program. So uh, it was a controversial issue in North Bay just to get one. And like our, my colleague said, there's 50,000 population. And here we're uh, rushing to put a second one. Uh, I don't like the location where it's been recommended. Uh, I think there's other areas that, that if, if we did decide as a council to, to go forward that uh, at a cost, because it'll cost us another 6000 or $7,000 a year. And, uh, and the thing is, is that uh, it, 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 I'd like to see, okay, how did they determine that there was a need for a second one, first of all? And then I would like to uh, find out how much it's going to cost us to empty that because it's going to be our responsibility. And then I would like to know whether that means that we would get out of uh, the program we just signed with the South Alliance providing funds towards their um, return a needle program. Uh, those are all the questions I would uh, ask before we could make a decision. And uh, I think they're worthy questions and uh, our public uh, require, uh, you know, requires to spend their money properly. And uh, maybe we should be looking at it from that perspective. Okay, thank you. Uh... Councillor Dan, uh, Councillor Denise and the camp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I read the letter uh, uh, right that says that this was these findings were from a a, fo a focus group. So I'm assuming they did their homework and they figured we we need one in, in at this part of West Nipissing and. I, uh, for the little bit of it cost, if we can prevent somebody from getting a, a a needle in the arm or something by mistake, I think it's worth it. It's not that much of an expense. While they're emptying, emptying one, they can empty the other one. So that would bring down the cost, I assume. So anyways, my uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of it. So that's my comments. Thank you, Councillor Denis. Councillor Lee, on the count. Well, I, I figured you did not send that for nothing. I, I would uh, I would have loved to have maybe a little bit of a, like, uh, it's hard to make decision when we don't have report on something. And that goes with uh, anything we're discussing. I mean, we, we're not prepared and I, I do support the bin, but before we put it, I would like to have some information about uh, uh, the reason because I'm, I'm reading the letter too and they're not sending that for nothing, obviously. Uh, so I would like to have a little bit more information about it, about the use of the, the location. I think it's strategy, uh, stra strategic, stra a strategic map. Je crois que probablement c'est une bonne location parce que c'est en ville. Puis en tout cas, il y a des sûrement des raisons encore pour ça. Pourquoi qui a fait la décision, je ne sais pas. Euh, je ne crois pas qu'on ait été demandé de rusher faire une décision à soi. C'était apporté à notre attention. Comme n'importe quoi d'autre, je crois qu'on a, on a le droit de demander des, des questions puis d'avoir des réponses avant qu'on décide. Mais définitivement, si ça peut aider à, à empêcher quelqu'un à ramasser des, des, des piqûres, puis on a, on a une équipe qui travaille constamment dans le corps pour, pour nettoyer. Puis euh, si on peut éviter que, que, que de, de, un peu de sécurité pour ces gens-là, puis les enfants qui se promènent, enfin tout. Je crois qu'on devrait avoir, moi j'aimerais avoir des réponses de la raison, comment qu'on a, qu'on en voit, puis peut-être qu'avoir deux bines aussi, il n'y aura pas une si grosse différence que ça, de en vider une ou en vider deux, ça ne prendra pas trois heures de plus, là. ils vont faire la même journée ou ils vont alterner ou, euh, 
comme, comme c'est là, mais je sais que ça fonctionne, parce que j'ai parlé même à, à, à le, le, un de nos uh, bylaw officers uh, one time that was emptying, and he said, they, they're really, it, it's working. There's a lot of needle that drop off. So, obviously, my, my, uh, my recommendation would be that, to have one, but to maybe ask questions about numbers, and the reason maybe they choose that location, And uh, then after that, uh, at the same time, before it comes back, the, the staff say, okay, how much will it cost if we put a base? And now we already know for the price to empty it per year, what it would cost to have to do two run at the same time. So, um, because there might be people using there that I won't be using over there. So one run will do the trick. So we'll see anyway. So uh, I would, for, uh, I would recommend that we, uh, we, we, we see that we're interested to have one, but to have the question that was requested around the table to be requested, uh, to be answered. Thank you. Okay, merci, uh, Elise, uh, Madam Mayor. Well, um, I support uh, uh, the offer of the installation of the second bin. Uh, strategically, when we agreed to have the first bin done, the Santa Alliance in partnership with the uh, stakeholders and with the health unit, uh, they made the uh, determination, they walked around, they identified uh, the spots uh, that would be suitable or convenient for the installation of these bins. Um, the cost to empty the Sharpies is basically for the disposal of it. It all goes according to volume. Uh, the more usage, uh, I see Alyssa saying no, that I'm not providing an accuracy pertaining to it, because I did ask at one time, what was the usage? So what's the cost uh, per year to empty the one bin that we have? So our, our bin that we have, um, we have it They, they empty it um, every other week, regardless of how full it is. It's, it's a contract we have that they come and do it every other week. And it costs us about $7,000 a year. So it doesn't matter. Um, it, I mean, it is based on volume and that if we actually needed them to come every week, it would be a, a higher cost. Um, but yeah, they're coming every other week uh, for the first year so we could see what kind of uh, volumes we had there. I have been playing a bit of phone tag with the health unit to see if they've got stats on... Um, you know, the number of needles recovered or, or off the streets or, or, or things like that. And I, I haven't got that information. Antidotally, just based on the reports, because our bylaw officers do check the bin um, as part of their patrol every day and just, you know, make sure that we're not full and overflowing and things like that, is that um, there's been only a very few occasions where the, where the bin has been full before the, the pickup has been, has been scheduled in the, in the last year. Um, the bin is obviously the well used, you know, it, it's, it's never an empty bin, but we've only had a couple occasions where, where we've actually, um, you know, needed to, to, to deal with the, the bin disposal in advance of our regular pickup day at time. Okay, thank you for the info. If I may, Mr. Chair, yes. but yes. if that bin was not be used, uh, the bulk of the cost is uh, making sure that those uh, Sharpies that are recovered from the bin are being disposed the proper way. So we have an agreement for the disposal of those Sharpies, right? Yeah. Yes, we, we've got a, a contract with, a, the, with the company that, that sort of came through the health unit and they, they do the whole, the whole nine That's yards. That's right. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is if the bin would not be used and we'd have no Sharpies to dispose, we wouldn't have that cost. Yes. Um, yeah, because they, they're still coming every two weeks regardless of whether the bin's got anything in it or not. And they're still charging us for every two weeks regardless of what they take out of the bin. Okay, so that's interesting because I don't know whether or not if we have any flexibility with that because I know we're not in the business of uh, uh, holding on to those Sharpies and that they need to be disposed in the proper fashion. But there was also the opportunity that we could have uh, disposed those Sharpies maybe uh, through the assistance of the West Nipsing General Hospital and covering an agreement with them for the disposal. So maybe that could be a route that we can explore to see if we'd be able to save uh, the trips coming down from the company, uh, whether or not if we have any Sharpies to dispose. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Dan? Uh, that That is, is not correct. Uh, in fact, uh, these companies are specialized in that and that in fact, uh, it's the health unit that recommend, recommends them. That's why there is a cost, it's a set cost, and that's why North Bay 
uh, there was such a controversy in North Bay because they knew they had to get into a contractual agreement with a specific company that was basically uh, referred to by the health unit to do the work. The hospital does not get into that in North Bay either. So I think the thing is, is that we're missing the point. The point is, is that uh, we have a contract. It's a contract we get in with based on a recommendation from the health unit. And the health unit basically gives us a list. We do a contract with them and then they come in and they do it on a regular basis. Actually every two weeks. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chair, I don't want to get into that debate, but I sit on the Saint Alliance and I recall the hospital saying they also have an agreement and there was a way of maybe if we wanted to partner with them, uh, we could have brought it to them, but whatever cost they'd be absorbing, we'd have to pay it. So I'm just saying that there could be a window here that we can explore. But either way, um, if we have that sharp container, that one that is being used, which is sometimes half full or full, it definitely means that it has a beneficial impact for the community. Yes, I agree to get more information, but I also agree in getting the second sharp container installed and strategically by having the experts that deal with these issues provide us with a recommendation I would also endorse the location that they're recommending. And um, pertaining to the sharp returns at the Santa Alliance, we gave them a donation of $200 um, to also encourage uh, individuals to return it to the Santa Alliance. But uh, I don't think that's going to break the bank. But if we can make a difference in the safety of our local citizens for a needle not to get in the wrong hand, I would definitely entertain it. It's unfortunate that North Bay don't have more than one and that it's a controver controversial issue. But my main concern is West Nipissing and my main concern is making our community safe. Okay, thank you. Um, from what I hear, we need more information. And the only issue that I have is the location. And I think uh, being close to uh, Villa Old Bank, I think it's not a good location. I think if we would if the bank would be closer to Town Hall, uh, I think it would be a better better place, even behind it or whatever, is I think it would be a better place than uh, where they're suggesting it's going to be on John Street. That's my, my point. That's my view, and maybe the South Alliance can look at it and whatever. So that's my view. Thank you. That's it for me, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. But concluding that discussion, when will it be scheduled to return back to committee? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe next meeting. Uh, would we have more information for next meeting or the meeting after that? I mean, it all depends. If we, it's, I, I guess, not a really a defer. It's just because uh, we're not voting on anything. Uh, so we'll have to come back to committee maybe uh, uh, in, in December. Be the second meeting in December. It would, it would give them uh, enough time to give another month uh, to get all the information information that was raised tonight for the questions. Okay. 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 No problem. Thank you. On procède avec le prochain comité, Community Services Service Communautaire. And we have um, the item of update for the Werner Gym and the outdoor rink plan. And I'll pass it on to our Director of Community Services, Stéphane. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, as the memo states, um, the Community Services Coordinator did reach out to a couple uh, community groups in, in Werner to see if there's a uh, an opportunity to partner with us as far as housing some of our gym equipment to be able to see continuity with respect to the gym in Werner. Um, the two particular groups that we uh, contacted both uh, declined and, and said that uh, you know they, it wasn't possible for them to entertain such a partnership. Um, so we we're basically uh, coming back to council with uh, status quo where uh, the Werner gym uh, remains closed uh, that uh, as we knew it uh, at the top of the arena in the, in the main hall. So uh, we've, we've explored some opportunities or some options, but have not uh, found any takers uh, on uh, partnering with us for that, uh, that initiative. 
OK. Um, the question I have, Steph, to, with this, if you don't mind, Madam Mayor, uh, there was, you know, we were thinking about putting the, the, the gym in, in, the, uh, in the building we have on uh, uh, La Rue Principale, I think, eh? and uh, what, what's the hole up there? Is it, uh, is it because we have to man it, or is it because it's not, because of COVID, it's not a good time to do it, or? So as I stated uh, the last meeting, and I think if we date back to April, uh, uh, because of COVID and the lost revenue, we had to find some savings. And uh, I came back to council with a, a uh, cost cutting plan uh, for 2020 that saw some uh, capital projects being delayed uh, to subsequent years. And uh, as I mentioned uh, the, at our last meeting as well, uh, the reason, uh, and that was one of the, the, the capital projects that was recommended for deferral, which council unanimously approved, is the gym for the uh, relocation of the gym and burner, uh, the construction of the covered uh, roof for the rink and field, uh, the construction of a new outdoor rink in Cache Bay, and uh, we, uh, the 30000 that we had earmarked originally for the uh, improvements at the beach in Sturgeon. So, uh, council unanimously supported that recommendation, and so that's why in 2020, uh, the relocation of the gym to our municipal building inverter is not happening, and that'll be brought back to council for deliberation at the 2021 budget. Thank you. If I may, um, Stéphane, I received a call, or I was speaking with uh, the property owner of La Saint-Nicole de René Coupil, and... Uh, Anyway, they have a lot of space. It's a farmer school, which is uh, adjacent to our Verner Municipal Building. And their committee will be discussing the subject matter uh, in the upcoming days to see if there could be an opportunity to host the Verner Gym at that location. And um, I've provided also your name and your phone number so the individual can be in contact with you. So there might be that opportunity that could be explored. Sure, if, they, if, there's, some, if there's some organization that wishes to uh, uh, look at that option and see what they can do, by all means, they can contact me, we'll work with them. Obviously, what we're doing is just lending our equipment to a, a separate organization they will incur a lot of the risk and liability associated to housing that gym. And if they've got a, a safe plan that they can get approved uh, by the health unit, by all means, uh, as council uh, directed, we will certainly provide our equipment for uh, uh, the residents uh, to, to utilize inverter. Okay, so I'll continue with the round table just to see Conseil Chris. Um, no, I have no questions about the gym. Okay, Conseil Rowley. Yeah, <clears throat> well, that's great news. If there's a committee that is willing to take to, to take this on, if there's some lodging for it, uh, it's kind of risky. But if that's what they want to do, hey, uh, I'm 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 for it. Thank you. Okay, but when we say it's uh, risky, they need insurance and cover the liability. But would the municipality provide any support? financial support instead of incurring the cost and hiring staff? If that's a question to me, that's that's a council decision whether they want to support uh, financially an organization to house uh, some of our gym equipment. Uh, that's totally up to council to decide. Uh, but um, as far as the risk and liability, whoever will house our equipment and run a public gym will certainly have to adhere to all guidelines and protocols as set out by the health unit in the province. And they'll certainly have to provide uh, some level of uh, uh, planning and assurance to the health unit that this will be done in a safe manner. That's correct. And if they need to hire someone to assist them with that, would the municipality entertain that opportunity? Again, that's for council to decide. It's, uh, I leave that to you to direct us. Conseil Leo? Yeah, thank you, Madam I I'm confused. I mean, if there's a cost from the municipality, if we transfer it over to a private to a private organization and we're still liable, I, what, what would be the point? Uh, I think there's more uh, to it than that. I mean, if, if the committee wants to take it over on their own uh, without getting the, uh, the municipality, I'm, I'm okay. 
But if, if we have liability or is it cost? I, I said, no, thank you. Conseil Dan? Yes, I think there's a couple of issues here. The first issue is, as I just hope we're not wasting uh, Stefan's time uh, because, you know, we, we, we already directed him to go and see other uh, organizations in Werner and they weren't ready to take it. The second part is that, uh, the second issue is that Stefan is dead on. Uh, with COVID right now, uh, they'd have a lot of hoops to, uh, to, uh, uh, to cross, or they'd have a lot of things to cross before they could even uh, entertain opening up because uh, we know for a fact COVID's not any better right now. The numbers are going up. And uh, it's all, all the indications are showing that uh, the gyms are going to be next to be effective. So from a perspective, I think I don't want to waste our, our employees time. And as much that uh, uh, maybe what we should be doing is waiting to waiting to see what happened with uh, COVID and then uh, go from there. But uh, I, I, if there's any cost incurred by the municipality, I don't think we should move forward. Conseil Denis. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't think the issue is uh, is that we're wasting somebody's time here. I think uh, Werner residents deserve uh, a gym if we can accommodate them. It's not the end of the world, so it's not wasting anybody's time. But uh, all we need is a report on the cost incurred by the municipality, and that's what I'd like to see. We have to, if they hire, do we support the employee or? Cost like that, so we don't know the cost, so it has to be brought back. So that's my opinion. Well, I, I mean, they had a gym in uh, in Werner, and uh, and the reason, the main reason, I think that uh, it was uh, not possible to reopen it is because of the restrictions. So obviously anybody that wants to open the gym will have to follow that. It's it's a given. They won't be able to open the gym and this is okay because I'm a nice person and I'll open the gym. So come and get hurt and you there's no liability to it. We understand that. I understand that. I don't think it's a waste of time. And especially right now that Werner don't have a representative at the table to try to defend their 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 need or what they want. I think uh, we need to look as a group to to support uh, to support whatever we can. There's nothing stopping us for somebody's interested in providing Stefan. Stefan won't walk to Werner and try to get the information. He was the people will provide the number. It's a phone call, and you can ask a specific question and then bring it back and say yes. And uh, as far as liability, we need to wait. What is the cost? Because I think the main reason was staffing to try to manage staff and to try to oversee it, the cleanup and everything. So the liability, we need to know how much if they have to pay insurance and we discuss it there and we'll vote on the, that issue when it comes around. Right now, I think it's uh, just something that we need to, we, we hold them to the resident to look if there's a possibility to bring it back and to make a decision then. I mean, nobody asked to make a decision tonight. So uh, thank you, Stefan, for your work. And I'm sure Stefan is open to receive a couple of phone calls and answer questions, and we'll go from there. I mean, we're not uh, trying to, to, to make him work uh, overtime every night to find a location. We don't want him to go. We want people to come to him if they have an opportunity to do something. I think that's what it's all about. So I would support uh, something when I have the information that we need to make a decision. So tonight, we don't have to make a decision. We're just talking. So... Okay, Thank you, so, Stefan. so if okay. there is a proponent, the proponent will call Stefan. And the main reason why the gym is not open is because the Verner Arena is not open. Oh, and we were also told yeah. that there'd be other- I uh, thought they we, were opening. Well, I'm not sure if we have an update regarding the opening date for the Verner Arena. Is there an update regarding that, uh, Stefan? Yes, the Werner Arena is scheduled to open on Monday, the, 20th, okay. the 23rd, I believe. Okay, so um, does it mean that since the arena is opening next Monday that we can accommodate the gym with our no. own resources? No, I, as I no. explained, no. I think uh, the last time the, um, 
the gym is located at the upstairs hall. There's accessibility issues and there's a whole gamut of guidelines and protocols we have to follow. It's about mitigating the risk. It's about ensuring public safety. The reason we can do it at the Sturgeon Falls Complex is because we have paid staff in that building from 6.30 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. on a daily basis. So we have uh, protocols in place where people come in, they sign in, we they fill out questionnaires related to COVID. We've met all and, we, and I think we've exceeded mm -hmm. uh, what the province and the health units expect of, of not only private but public entities running uh, facilities, indoor facility, recreation facilities. In Werner, we don't have paid staff. We don't have, uh, we're not set up uh, for uh, clerks. We're not set up for computers. We're not set up to take payment. We're not set up for any of that to monitor, contact tracing, everything that's required of us. So as staff, we make recommendations based on, yes, cost, and those, those come back to council. But we make our, our recommendation based on uh, information we have from our, our, our partners, our, our health authorities. And we, we always plan while mitigating the public safety and risk to our residents and people using our facilities. So to say that running the Werner Fitness Center as, as the setup is now is, is not doable. Council, if they direct us to do so, we will, but we will require investment in setting up IT, hiring staff, having people sit there, monitor, and to basically uh, uh, um, assist in, in extra disinfection and cleaning and whatnot. So as it stands, the way that it is configured in Werner, we are not recommending that the, we operate the Werner uh, Fitness Center even though the arena is scheduled to open on Monday. Okay, so what we're saying, what I hear is that the only opportunity for the Burner Gym to reopen is that we need to find someone that would be willing to operate the gym on our behalf. Yeah. Not on our behalf, no. I think, I think we basically, I think what council agreed to, if somebody's willing to take some of our equipment over, is operate the gym on their behalf using our equipment. That's what we said. Okay, and otherwise there's no gym whatsoever for Werner. Unless council uh, directs us to otherwise and provide uh, funding to go along with what we're gonna need to implement it. Okay, but it I just want- wouldn't be our recommendation. Well, um, yeah, I, for the reason, I, for the I'm reason not Steph really mentioned, I'm not Good. going to rehash the discussion that we had at the other meeting, but what was proposed at the previous meeting was a uh, full pledge operating the gym based on the hours of usage at the Werner Arena. And I know that there were options also that were identified. Do we have to go to that scale or can we lower the, the, the amount of hours and reduce the actual cost? That was another option that was also discussed. I remember Conseil Denis making reference to that. So right now we'll look at, well, what Jay? What you settled on was what uh, Steph uh, basically researched. Yeah. And what you settled on after the discussion was the fact that it was not practically feasible to do it at the location we have. And that if somebody else wanted to take it over, they could take it over. Uh, but with respect to, uh, you know, I, I think that when you look at uh, issues like this, it, it, you know, as a one off, I don't know that you appreciate at the time where COVID is starting to rear its head way uglier than even March. It, it's it, it really isn't something right now uh, that we're prepared to do. We're not saying no to a gym in, in uh, Werner. What we're saying is it's not feasible uh uh, right now. And so if there's a way that somebody can do it in the interim or permanently, that'd be great too. Uh, you know, that's the way it's going. But the, the, rec or the, the uh, requirements to run a gym uh, in uh, the province of Ontario right now are very onerous, very stringent. And uh, I, heaven forbid, should we not uh, follow that? And, and it, it's deemed that they caught that uh, in, at our Werner Arena. Uh, and we can control, and when we come to you with uh, operational requirements or, or, or recommendations is because we've analyzed it in detail and can control uh, and, and satisfy the government and also satisfy ourselves and council that our residents are safe 
um, um, kind of uh, getting our services, sorry. But anyway, so it's just not doable in our, in our gym right now, in our uh, arena right now. Okay, so we'll see and wait and point out what the, um, if there is a third interest that comes forward. Um, if there is that one interest that comes forward, not a third, sorry, because um, we approach two and two declines. So if there is one interest, well, then it'll go to our director of community services and come back to the table. And then we'll be able to make a decision based on that. Yeah. Okay. So we move on to the next committee, which is sewer and water, and I'll pass it on to the chair, Conseiller Dan. Uh, excuse me, Madam Mayor. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, 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 yes uh, Conseiller Lise. Madam Chair, there's, there were a second thing that, uh, that uh, needed oh, before the outdoor, yeah, okay. the outdoor rink. Okay, I'll pass it back to our Director of Community Services. Do you want to give us an update for the outdoor rinks? Well, again, um, you know, we were faced with uh, some challenges and some complex um, logistical issues when, when running our facilities, especially in our community where we're such a large uh, sized community and we have facilities in various locations. So I did consult with the health unit. We looked at variable options for the outdoor rink season, which is just around the corner. Um, and, you know, we can safely operate our outdoor rinks this season, but there's definitely going to be some drastic changes from years past. Um, because we can't uh, ensure proper disinfection, regular disinfection in our buildings tied to our, which are tied to our outdoor rinks, um, because again, we, we don't staff these buildings while the rink uh, is open. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's problematic for us to do so. What we're suggesting and we're recommending to council is we do have rink attendants. We can build ice. We can maintain the outdoor rinks themselves, but the, the buildings next to or tied to the outdoor rinks will have to remain closed. So what that means is the rinks will be open. Uh, it, similar to years past where the lights will be turned on by the attendants, the snow will be, the ice will be uh, uh, maintained by the attendants and the lights will be turned off at regular hours uh, by the attendants as well. we'll put benches outside. It'll be like almost old time uh, outdoor rink hockey and, and skating where you show up at the rink, you basically, you, there'll be benches and you basically have to put your skates on, uh, and, and uh, put your boots back on once you're done out in the cold. Now, I know it's not, it's not convenient because we're used to having these nice warm buildings, but for everyone's safety, um, that's how we're gonna have to proceed this year. Um, this, the other thing that we're, we're looking into, we did touch base with the health unit pertaining to porta potties. And, and again, they refer us back to Ontario legislation on running for recreation facilities. And basically if we can ensure that the uh, porta potties are disinfected uh, regularly, um, then they're they're saying we can you we can install porta potties at our outdoor rink. So uh, we did look into that. Uh, we think that the rink attendance by disinfecting at the beginning and and towards the end of the uh, the uh, the daily um, outdoor rink sessions, uh, we feel that it, it's we have the potential that we'll be able to install porta potties. Now that obviously that'll come at a cost. Uh, we're looking at around five thousand uh, dollars for the season to have porta potties at all of our locations. So um, uh, again, we we do have a bit of time looking at the long range forecast. I don't think we'll be skating on our outdoor rinks at least for the next couple of weeks. Um, so we we leave it to council to uh, uh, provide us direction on the recommendations proposed for this year's operation of the outdoor rinks. Jose Ivan. Well. Uh, thank you, Madam Edis. You know, it's it's uh, it's certainly an opportunity for people to get out and, and do something. Uh, and you know, I, as a, as as in my younger years, we used to sit on the bench and, and we used to put our boots on and we used to you know because we were somewhat used to the cold. But uh, I think if we can provide them with a rink 
And taking in consideration of what you've said, uh, Seth, I would agree that we, we do have rinks. I think, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's there. And with their time, like, you know, being cooped up in the home, it would give them the time and opportunity to go out and at least do a little bit of skating. And, uh, and I think that could, that could be done. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Chris. So yeah, I support uh, opening the uh, outdoor rinks any way we can. That's uh, fine by me. Uh, just a small question from a safety perspective. Uh, like I, I know, I, I only really know the field rink and uh, there's a telephone inside that rink, but I assume like none of these rinks have active, the, the building's closed and there's no access to a telephone. And, and I guess these days, Valve no longer installs call boxes. So, I mean, is that is that like a liability or does it matter? That would be my only question. It, it, and if I may, Ma Madam Mayor, it's not necessarily our liability. Um, uh, I guess, you know, parents can remain at the rink while their, ch while their children are on uh, the outdoor rink and supervise them accordingly. Uh, if, if parents choose to drop their children off and they don't provide cell phones or cell phones aren't operational at our outdoor rinks, um, I, we, we don't see that as, as our municipal liability. We do ask uh, for children under the age of 18 that when, when children are using the outdoor rinks, it's always the best for, to have parents supervise their children while they're doing that outdoor activity. Thank you. Conseiller Rowley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm totally in support of uh, opening the rinks on and do everything possible for the safety but definitely yes we need the outdoor rinks for the kids uh that's that's a beautiful pastime so i totally agree thank you Conseil leo yes same thing i go along with the recommendation i'm fine thank you Conseil dan uh, thank you steph for your work on this uh yes i agree with you that uh, we should make every effort to get them uh, open. Uh, the other issues, well, unfortunately, we're stuck with, uh, I guess, COVID-19, and we just have to make it work. Thanks. Conseil Denis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I guess the kids are spoiled. Yes, Steph, we used to do that all the time. We're not dead. We froze a few toes. That's about it. But anyways, what's the, uh, what's the 5,000 you're talking about for Porta Potty? That's a regular maintenance anyways, right? Well, um, there's no extra cost because of COVID or just the cleaning up. No, there, it's basically it's because we're going to have porta potties at all of our locations. Where prior to, I thought I think we only had uh, two locations served. So now we're we're adding, uh, I believe, four more porta potties. So it's going to increase the cost. Yeah. Same cost for living, right? Yes. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Conseillers. Well, I certainly agree with that. I think it's. Uh... I think it's it, it's almost a must, a must, especially that we had to cut uh, everything uh, everywhere else, like uh, even the gym. I mean, it cannot be used to its full capacity right now because of the restrictions. So, and uh, but I do agree with that. Um, uh, as far as the phone, I think a teenager. I don't think there's a lot of teenagers that don't have their own phone, but. Uh, to be play on the safe side, uh, I'm sure. Can we have signs saying that uh, on you use at your own risk? We're not responsible. I do understand that the building will be closed, but uh, uh, and yes, it should be the responsibility of parents. I don't know about up to 18, but uh, especially a younger crowd uh, under 16, they should have the parent and. Uh, but it's not always the case. So, uh, but uh, just to protect uh, and maybe a, a call to see because who knows, you know, liability sometimes it, it goes a lot farther. So I'm sure you check, Stefan, um, the 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 policy if we would be liable if something happened because that would change a matter or something. But a sign, having sign, and uh, yes, I do uh, agree. I agree for the expense. I think it's. Uh, I mean, they need something to do. That that's very clear. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. I think the direction is clear. We want the outdoor rinks to be opened. We are aware of the additional cost because the buildings will not be open. They are gonna remain closed. 
Just on a final note, Stefan, how many rinks are we looking at and do we have all the rink attendants lined up for those rinks? Uh, we have rinks uh, that will be operational in all our, our communities, such as uh, La Vigne, Verner, Field, River Valley, Cash Bay, and Sturgeon. We have rink attendants uh, confirmed. Uh, with the exception of Sturgeon, we had one individual contact us uh, that he's interested. So I've got our facilities manager following up with him. Uh, to uh, see if he's still interested, and, and uh, if so, we'll have a rink attendant for all of our outdoor rinks. Okay, and will Sturgeon have two outdoor rinks as the past or one? No, no there'll just be the, uh, the one outdoor rink. We haven't done the oval in a couple of years. Okay, yeah. Conseil Denis and Conseil Yvon. Yes, Steph, uh, Steph, you're just mentioning the names. I'm wondering if uh, does North Monetteville and Monetteville have a public rink out there? They don't. No, no eh? Huh, that's weird. Yeah. No, they don't. Right. They don't okay, thank you. Merci, Yvon. Uh, merci, Madame Mérez. Uh, Steph, at one time we used to provide a rink next to the arena in Werner. Is that possible? No, yeah, it's still in the works. It's, oh, okay. it's going to be in the parking lot. We we extended the water uh, line last year, and yeah, it's uh, that oh, we were okay. still extending. And we've had we do have somebody that's willing to to man it for us this year. So yeah, thank you very much, Ma okay. Madam Mayor. If I if I may, since we're on the subject of COVID and services and programs and whatnot, there's one more thing. If I if I can. Uh, add is our municipal programming. And again, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sounding very negative here because we are affecting uh, uh, programs, but it's obviously, as we know, it's not a normal year. Um, as far as programs in our arenas, uh, public skating and, sh and shinny hockey, uh, again, due to logistics and, and, and risk and, and, and crowds gathering and whatnot, uh, we are certainly uh, strongly recommending that we do not proceed with public municipal programs uh, as we have in the past. And I, I also consulted about that um, subject matter with the health unit. I also looked at what other neighboring municipalities are doing. I know Sudbury are not running uh, public uh, skating programs, nor is North Bay and, and Timiskaming Shores, to name a few. Um, so I think until further notice, because I am getting calls about uh, 55 and over shinny, and I'm getting calls on, on public skating, but um, it's not recommended that we can run programs right now uh, in, in both of our arenas. So for the time being, uh, public skating and, and shinny hockey would remain uh, suspended. Uh, that being said, the 55 and over program, I know that um, there was a lot of interest in years past I've suggested to them that they can organize and, and rent ice uh, once or twice a week uh, for that core group of 55 and over shinny hockey players. And we would uh, work with them as though they'd be uh, any of our adult leagues, but they'd be running a program daytime. Um, so ice is available for rental for private groups. But as far as public programs, uh, it's just not feasible for us to, to, to be operating those at this time. Okay. Um, I know that we're doing the best that we can and that we're making sure that we mitigate the risk and always at the forefront, the safety of individuals. Um, in the interim, would there be an opportunity to come back to council, maybe with the actual cost if families um, would like to rent the ice for half an hour or an hour that they can enjoy skating in the event that the ice is not being used, underutilized, there could be an opportunity here that we can explore further because we're not in normal times. And I'd like to see some type of report with options that can come back to us that we can discuss and see if there'd be an opportunity to look at something different that we can provide to our residents for the opportunity of indoor public skating. So as far as that, that option, Madam Mayor, is, is concerned, we are renting ice to private individuals. What we do is we enter a, an ice, renting, a ice rental contract, so they have all the stipulated rules and regulation. We provide additional information pertaining to uh, COVID guidelines and protocols. So 
if if I personally would want to rent one hour of ice time and bring uh, my family with me because we're supposed to be only uh, remaining within our so our, our bubble, um, and I would want to rent one hour of ice time, I still can do that. We do rent. Um, that being said, is the onus now becomes on the person renting uh, the ice. Uh, to ensure contact tracing, to ensure everyone is wearing their mask indoors, except for on the ice. So uh, that risk now or that liability or that, that responsibility now becomes to the renter and not uh, us as a municipality trying to run a public program. Okay, and that part I understand, but I guess what I'm looking at, Stéphane, c'est that regarder voir si il y a des coups réduits ou si, if there could be some type of incentive. And maybe in a month from now, we're going to know also what are the free ice time available. And I mean, if there's an opportunity that we can Absolutely. accommodate our residents during COVID and make life a little bit more enjoyable, I'd like to see what are the options that we can do. So if there's no disagreement, and I don't want to be a burden, you know, on all the tasks that you need to do, but I think it's something that we should be exploring. Absolutely. I can come back with a, a plan for that. Okay. That would be appreciated. No further questions? Okay. So now we do move on to the next committee. Sewer and Water, Igui O, and I'll pass it on to the chair, Conseil Dan. Uh, thank you. Um, this is a, an issue that uh, is, uh, is not a simple issue, and it, it is actually complex. Uh, there's a three-pronged thing to this. So actually what is going to happen is uh, I'll ask uh, uh, <clears throat> Alyssa, uh, Sean, and perhaps J uh, Jay to help me with it. Now, uh, the first part is that uh, there is a way of doing it through a local improvement. And uh, basically what it would do is it would enable the neighbors to uh, uh, of this individual to, uh, to be uh, given access to water. Uh, but however, it'd be at a cost and uh, they would be having to uh, willing to, to look at it. So that's the first part. And then I'll let uh, Alicia Farp elaborate on that. The second part is that uh, these one-off connects, apparently I've been told is becomes a planning issue and it becomes a, not a planning in the sense of uh, Denise committee, planning in the issue of infrastructure it becomes a planning issue because you get these runoffs and then we get to the point where we're digging underneath roads to one individual and it causes issues from, from the infra infrastructure pr uh, process. Or, and that I'll let Sean talk to. And the third issue is that whether, uh, you know, wh what, what can a CO, CI, or our CAO recommend in regards to moving forward? So Alicia, would you please start? Uh, thanks. Um, just to discuss the uh you know the the local improvement and, and what a local improvement is um compared to what was done in in Dutrizac and what's been done in the past um so a, a local improvement this this is kind of working under the assumption that we're actually going to run some type of of full service down the other side of that road to service a number of properties that are on the other side of, of Nipissing um and a local improvement then takes that cost and allocates it to all the properties that are impacted there uh generally based on the, the frontage that they have in a, in a prorated amount. Um, local improvements come to councils uh, often by, by petition so that there's a number of residents that want something done and they, they bring the request to, to council and there's sort of a threshold as far as the number of, of uh, owners and the amount of assessment that has to be reached for a petition to be considered valid. Council does have the option of kind of um, enforcing a local improvement on the, uh, the uh, properties along that, that side. So if council wanted to go ahead with this and, and wanted to sort of assess it back out to the, the residents there, again, it would still be done through a local improvement, um, by our local, local improvement charge. However, when council is sort of enforcing it back on residents as opposed to residents asking for it, then there are you know, various stages of, of notification and, and opportunities for, for residents to um, object and appeal. And it becomes a very uh, sort of technical process and um, there'll be a bit of time involved in, in that as well. Um, what, what we did sort of with, with you know, Dutrazac where we sort of said that, um, you know, some of these people are, are gonna connect and we're gonna assess it just on those people that are connecting now and we're gonna refund them for the next 600 years 
on, um, you know, when other people connect and when people divide properties and kind of keeping track of that. And we're sending $12 checks to people that moved 20 years ago. And, and, and then we need to keep track of how many times they split the, the, uh, the property. Um, not only is it incredibly arduous, it, it's not actually enforceable at all. And, and the same with some of the other arrangements we had in that, you know, when we get into these things that are outside of local improvement, um, we don't actually have the ability to enforce that collection on those properties down the road. So um, it, is, it is absolutely doable through a, through a, a local improvement if, uh, if council wants to go that way or if the residents want to go that way, um, but it will look a little bit different. It will look a, little, a, lot, of, a lot different from the uh, structure that's been done in the past. Okay, thank you, Alyssa. Um, uh, Sean, would you like to uh, talk about the planning issue in, in as much as the infrastructure, water and sewers? Sean, Sean, you're on mute. Yeah, there you go, Sean. There you go, Mr. Chair. Um, so this summer when the uh, developer approached us to, um, I guess he had uh, approximately seven properties that, that were looking for, for a water connection. Um, at, so at that point, um, I guess he approached the, the property owners and gave them a quotation to supply water to their properties. Um, at that point, um, I had requested a, uh, a design drawing so that we, we need as-built drawings, right? So that we don't have rogue lines under our, our streets and, and uh, supplying uh, properties. Um, the developer came back and, and the cost was, uh, was, was quite high, um, in, in my opinion. So I approached the consultant personally and, and kind of um, adjusted the scope of, of the design work and reduce the cost down to, I believe it was $1,500. Um, so it was significantly less than, uh, than originally quoted. Um, so the developer went back to the property owners and um, you know, advised them of, of the new cost. So there was a significant savings, um, but they, most of them uh, opted out. Uh, from the seven properties, I believe we only, we only have the one property owner who is still interested. At that point, uh, the developer basically backed out. Uh, from a, a municipality's perspective, uh, we have the design uh, drawing. Uh, it's a matter of drafting a form one and uh, the municipality would, would be ready to go. The, the rest is, uh, as I had mentioned to uh, Jay, it's, it's a financial um, issue. Um, but but from, from uh, Public Works or distribution perspective, we are ready to go. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jay? Not much more to add other than um, it's not a simple issue. It's not, it, it's, you know, and I was trying to indicate that, uh, you know, when looking at this, that we were looking at it, but it's just, uh, you know, uh, you know, the only uh, way to minimize, well, there's two ways really. Um, there, there's, if council wants to pay the whole thing for uh, one person, um, that is a council choice. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think it would be fraught with, um, some precedents, uh, where you would want to be very careful about. Um, I think that there are a lot of people that are on wells, uh, that uh, have problems and that, uh, in fact, uh, I know one in Leving had to replace his well, uh, commercial well, uh, have problems and, and they have to, uh, they, you know, uh, and they, they have to fix it. But so if you start um, fixing that for one people and paying the infrastructure for one person, you're going to run into, uh, you're going to run into some problems later on policy wise. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not sound policy. Um, so it's either uh, if the person wants uh, municipal water um, council can pay for it, uh, the individual can pay for it, or as indicated, we could impose uh, a local improvement uh, fee and spread that uh, fee to those on that side uh, who aren't, uh, you know, who, uh, who, who will not necessarily benefit uh, from it right now. 
but certainly it uh, as a sales pitch to those individuals, I, I think it becomes an asset or, or a um, uh, to, to the property. So you might want to keep your your well or whatever, and you'll have that well. But if your well ever fails, you you know you won't have to replace it with a thirty thousand dollar expenditure. Uh, you'll just be able to connect to the uh, to the stop that will be there. Uh, you know, uh, will be there ready for them. So there's uh, those options, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, for discussion, Yvonne, Councillor Yvonne. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I, do, you know, like if there was, it's like everything else, supply and demand. If, if the this, if we were supplying many, like seven was, I thought many, uh, and now we're down to one. I don't think the, it's feasible to proceed in any way. Uh, um, it's unfortunate. I mean, maybe later on, if the, if there's interest or if we can apply for some grant or anything or whatever, uh, then I would uh, suggest that we proceed. But other than that, I, I don't think we should be looking at anything for one person only. Uh, it's just the cost is phenomenal for that alone. So I, I, I wouldn't agree that we proceed. Thank you, Councillor Yvonne. Uh, Councillor Fisher. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree with uh, Yvonne, and sorry, I, I, I missed the, the cost. The cost of doing this is what? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, Sean? So yeah, I, I need to be careful um, because I'm, I'm going on memory here, <laughs> and I've, I've had a lot of numbers run through my head lately. But I believe for to uh, to service the seven properties properly, um, the quotation was in and about seventy thousand dollars. But again, please don't don't quote me. I, I would like to verify that number uh, with the developer. Okay, perhaps you could get back to uh, Councillor Chris on that. Excuse me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I agree with Yvonne. I don't think there's anything to do here. Thank you. Excuse me, if I can prod uh, Sean's memory, I'm, I'm surprised Elise is quiet on this. Didn't we have a memo that said that de the developer said 70, but then Sean, after you did some work and worked with the uh, consultant, you managed to drop it to the 30,000, uh, 35,000? I. You don't remember that? No, I don't, Jay, sorry. I, I, again, I'd have to look at the notes. I think that the consultant fee only was around 11,000 and, and I'd managed to, to uh, bring it down to $1,500 uh, from the 11,000. But as for, I, I think the, it was around 10,000 per property. If, if I can, if I remember correctly. Elisa, do you, am I, am I totally off base here? I'd, I'd have to be like Sean and, and, and go dig back through the the uh, the memos there. So I, I would I would actually touch Sean's memory right now. <laughs> well, in lieu of that, I think we should go. You know, in lieu of what being said, Mr. Chair, I think we should maybe go back and get the right figures and see what what we're looking at as far as costs before we proceed. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the discussion should continue. Uh, perhaps thank you for your comment, anyway, Sibon, but. Let's go continue with uh, the round table. Roly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm in agreement as far as the project. Uh, if there's only one entry, uh, then no, I don't think this is uh, this my decision on this one. Thank you. Councillor Lamette. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, if the... Uh, it would be in a thirty thousand uh, range, and it'd be about five thousand per per uh, resident per household or property, as you say. And maybe they would go for it. I'm not sure, but I mean, right now uh, it would be just that one individual. And I uh, the same with it comes to be wrong and uh, and Chris, and not at this time, uh, unless they come back and uh, we're all in agreement with the maybe I don't know thirty or thirty or thirty five thousand, but we don't have the figures. So thank you. Mayor Joanne. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't think anyone expects to get the service um, at no cost. And uh, no, I would not support undertaking infrastructure expenses to service one resident or to service X number of residents at no cost. 
Um, I know that it is a complex issue because the issue of Dutrisac was not dealt with overnight. Um, it did entail quite a lot of discussion. What I would like to see is the fact that we have multiple residents that are not hooked to water services, if they could all be sent a letter letting them know officially what would be the cost to acquire the service and for them to officially provide us with a written response. And also twofold, um, if we are to bring the service to one or to more than one, if they agree, um, is there an opportunity for a payment plan? Um, maybe I'm wrong, but if memory serves me right, Dutrisac had the option to either pay the full amount up front or to have the amount prorated, um, I believe, on their tax bill. There was something as far as an agreement um, that we made it feasible for those that could not pay the entire amount up front. So um, we should ask, we, you're asking a question, perhaps we should answer, uh, Jay, can you answer that for us? Either me or Elisa, obviously local improvement charges could span over years and could be financed uh, on your tax bill over a, a period, uh, an acceptable period of, uh, of, of uh, time. Uh, so let's say it's a 10,000 per, you can do it over uh, 10 years, a little bit of interest. You'd be looking at a thousand bucks and change. Okay. So if I may, Mr. Chair, um, if council agrees, and if some residents would want to have those payment options, uh, the reference of the letter issued to them providing the cost and letting, know, letting them know that there could be an opportunity to have that amount um, divided amongst different years as an improvement project. I think that was the initial request of the one individual. The just, one as a, in just as a point of order, uh, Madam, Chair, Madam Mayor, uh, I think Stefan, not Stefan, I think Sean did make a comment that there was discussion with those seven uh, properties. Uh, what you're basically saying is that you would want it to come from the municipality instead of the contractor. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying that the if I may continue, that we as a municipality issue a letter to those seven individuals to let them know that they have the opportunity to acquire the service and what would be their cost. And if they are interested in paying that cost up front, or an opportunity of an improvement program. Hey, thank, you. thank you. Thank uh, you. I just want to make a, a point. Sean, was that done by the, was that, did we have anything to do with the contractor, not the contractor, the developer doing it? No, as you know, our, our current policy is, um, should somebody want to service a, a property, they get quotations from a contractor, the municipality, um, we have a, a, a servicing agreement that we, we get into with the property owner. Uh, we have a security deposit that is retained for restoration purposes to ensure that roads and sidewalks are restored to uh, their original uh, state. But as for, as for getting involved in, uh, in, into servicing, uh, the municipality, uh, it's not our, our current uh, policy. Now, this one is a little trickier because you know, dropping down to one individual wanting the service, well, then that individual, sole individual, bears the cost of, of crossing Nipissing Street, as opposed to if they all, you know, chip in, they all brunt the cost of, of going under Nipissing Street, right? And, and it's, it gets a little bit tricky because some, some properties are a little further away. So, you know, how would you, would it be a, an even cost? If they all get it, then, then an even cost is, is fair and easy. But if you, if you start dropping some off, uh, then it gets a little bit trickier on, on who pays what. So then just to summarize what you said then, uh, just to fi finalize your comment, Madam Mayor, is that it's not a practice where we as a municipality send letters to proponents that uh, have already told the developer that they don't want to hook up to send a letter with a cost. Is that uh, the, correct, Sean? Yeah, that's not our uh, current uh, policy. 
Okay. But if I may, Mr. Chair, on that note, this council does have the prerogative of saying, you know what, we had seven interest and let's make sure that, um, you know, we don't have anyone that comes back at a later date and say, no, that isn't uh, what was my wish. Or now I'd like to be able to get connected when there's activities already taking place there. Okay, now, thank, even, you. thank you for your comment. I think we've got to move forward because of the time element. Councillor Denis, did you have uh, the round table? No, I'll do it now, I guess. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I guess uh, the main issue is precedence. We don't want to create a precedence and then we have to abide by that precedent. So it's very dangerous. If there's only one, you should pay for it. Uh, if there's a group, I'm not sure there's a group involved anymore, but if it's just one, you should pay for it. We shouldn't pay for that. So that's my comment. Thank you, Denis. Councillor Denis. Councillor Lees. Councillor Lees, you're Yes, I'm here. I was waiting okay. to, uh, I got a name. I didn't, I didn't say my name, so I've been polite and not interrupting. So, no, no, um, I uh, well, you know, it was done on the Trizac, and I think uh, I remember I was there. I was, I was really, if uh, Jay remember correctly, very vocal about it. Obviously, my work, I fought really hard for it. It was a grant that we're getting basically, I don't know how the, the, logistic about that but I mean and at that point of time when uh, they were they were option that the widow would be paying and blah 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 so I don't want to go into that but it is possible to be to be done and at that point of time I think it was I, I don't know Jay maybe I don't know if they were even 10 houses at that point of time that was ready to get connected when we did that project the they main pardon me you have a crown sign Okay, parce qu'en fait, les deux bars. Les deux, les deux bars étaient faits. Okay, so... Okay, there's over 35. You. Okay. Uh, there's over 35 right now, but then... Right now, oh, there's no, a lot. Oh. There's many more now. I think there are yeah. many more now, but originally... Okay. Yeah, so at my... my uh, I think what I want to come to to say is that at that point of time, there were a lot of uh, saying, well, it's a lot of money to do, and I mean, for 30 houses, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so finally it was done. So my question is, like it's seventy thousand dollars per resident right now. If they would have been the seven of them, Sean, am I correct? No, no, no. Uh, Ten thousand dollars per property. Okay, well, there's seven. Ten by seven, it's seven thousand dollars. No. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I, I no. No. Well, I just I'm not too good on maths, but I think I'm no, pretty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So seventy thousand dollars. I mean, you're talking about seven property. Uh, anybody know if there's vacant land on that side? Because I think they are like past a few hours. I was approached by Mr. Uh, well, I'm not going to say any name, obviously, a couple of times. I even talked to Sean about it. Sean directed me like exactly what he said. If they wanted the, the developer, they get together, they put something. And then after that, we'll come to what it's coming right now. So that, that's been done. Uh, in the past year by one resident. They changed their mind, obviously, maybe because of the price. But um, if there's potential that uh, we bring the water and there's a lot that can, because there's not much lot around the, uh, close to the core. Like Nipissing is one of them on one side that is pretty much built, but on the other side, there's a lot up to the Mellow Road. Uh, I know it's owned by, uh, I think, one resident or a few, but I mean, is there potential of development in that region that would encourage people to develop? And also, we've been hearing for the last six months, almost every day, federal, provincial money for infrastructure, and that would be a community investment. Because I mean, not only they would pay for, for, for the usage, but also a potential for further the development. Am I wrong or? Yes, Sean. Yes, if I may through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so just so we're clear, the uh, the line that we have designed is a two-inch feeder main. Uh, this would not supply fire protection. Uh, okay. And this would not supply more than the seven homes. Seven homes is is kind of the maximum that you can put on on a two-inch line. Just okay. so just so you understand. So, Councillor Lee, so you're basically saying that you're you're essentially for it, uh, but uh, with uh, 
Um, no, I did not say that. I, I don't believe that we would uh, we should spend that money just for one resident. I don't believe that either. Okay, thank you. But I mean, I think there would be a possibility. And I mean, uh, now it's public. If maybe uh, it will be in the paper and people will know, maybe people will change their mind if their potential for payment. And I don't know if it would explain or something like that. But I mean, I think it's a good opportunity. I think it's not uh, when you look at it, what is the cost of uh, somebody have problem with their, um, well, okay. well, I think it would be uh, sometime a lot more than $10,000. So I, 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 I hate to shut the door because it's been uh, many time approach that some wants it. And I guess because I don't know why there's so many people that back up because it was brought up before. Okay, thank so, you. I saw, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Lees. Uh, Councillor Leo. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Martin, uh, that prior to Sean, uh, maybe Jay remembered, I know there was an individual on Delorme Road and he paid to get water to this property. But then if the if the people between our property and, and uh, this individual, if they want to connect it, he had to pay him uh, part of the cost. Uh, Jay, uh, I don't know if you remember that, Jay. Yeah, that was extension. That was extending water. Uh, yeah. uh, Would that be uh, the same thing? Almost to the end, uh, towards LeBlanc Street, some of the homes towards LeBlanc Street. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that went through in that manner, but I think that's what we're trying to say is those past deals uh, become really problematic in okay. terms of enforcing it and we don't have an enforcement measure and b it is a nightmare when somebody's asking you for 12 bucks and they moved away 20 years ago and they heard that somebody connected uh, you know it, it's just it's just easier and cleaner to do it all together uh, the right. municipalities have a tool to do that it's called local improvement charges and that's the way it, it, it should go and that's clean and there are uh, financing or, or uh, extending uh, extending the cost over a period of time on, on that as well. But uh, so, um, but yes, Councillor Leo, uh, again, Champagne uh, was uh, that way as well. And it was just, uh, you know, very, very problematic for us to manage. Okay, thank you very much for the discussion around the table. I think we got to move forward. Uh, so basically what was uh, what transpired here is we have a number of people that are against providing it to one individual. Uh, if this creates a, a movement within the community that the other people see it differently now that we've discussed at a council and they're more or less aware of the numbers that are and they approach us and then all seven are ready to to move forward, well then maybe we would look at it from a perspective that perspective. But other than hey, that, I do have a question uh, Mr. Chair. And what is your um, question? My question uh, to Sean, if I may, can the developer inform the seven residents that if they were interested, that there could be an opportunity of an improvement project? Uh, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll look out for sure to the developer and, and kind of inform them of uh, the discussion at council and that he should uh, perhaps reach out with, uh, with, the, with the options. Okay, that would be greatly appreciated yeah. because maybe that could make a difference amongst the seven yeah. individuals. Okay, that's a good point. Thank you, let's move forward. Madam Chair, I'm finished with my, uh, my part of the agenda. Thank you. Is there a mover and a seconder for a 10 minute recess? Conseiller Lise, Conseiller Chris. We are past the eight o'clock margin for 8.14. So uh, we have, uh, I'll let our clerk, uh, do we need to read the resolution right away, uh, Mel? Uh, I, I don't think that we have anybody objecting to that. I've noted the no. over and seconder. Okay, so 8.14, if we can reconvene in 10 minutes at 8.24.
Okay, so are we all back? Who are we missing? Concierge Lees. Okay, it's been, um, according to my watch, 11 minutes. Okay, so we're going to proceed with the next committee, le prochain comité travaux publics, public works. I'll pass it on to the chair, Conseiller Yvon. Merci, Madame Mairesse. Uh, we have on our any item, uh, capital works update, puis, and I'll put, I'll give the uh, floor to uh, Sean to give us an update. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'll, I'll start off with our uh, whole ditch to King uh, Waterman Force Main project. Uh, so the uh, jack and bore operation under the CP right of way is, is complete. The casing is in. The uh, water main and the force main are also uh, have been drilled under Highway 17 and through the casing and out uh, to the amphitheater. So that, that the drilling operation of the uh, project is now complete and they are now working on commissioning uh, the water main and uh, commissioning the force main. Uh, so that 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 was being done uh, today. So um, the the project is currently and I, and I I don't I will say this uh, with <laughs> with caution. Uh, the project is currently uh, two weeks ahead of the the um, what I I considered a conservative schedule. Um, so it's good news. But uh, I know that today with the freezing, their gauges were freezing, the pumps were freezing, so that you know we can uh, we can lose some days, but but uh, they are in fact two weeks ahead. Um, the other, the next one was uh, the Majo street lights. I, I know that we've had a lot of uh, of you know uh, queries from uh, from the residents. Um, so the uh, the uh, directional driller is complete. Uh, he's installed the conduit and the handholes uh, required for the connections to the streetlights. The electrical contractor uh, was on site today, uh, making the connections to the streetlights. Uh, that leaves the ESA inspection. The electrical safety authority needs to inspect. The appointment is tomorrow afternoon. The contractor is he he told me at four today that it, it's going to be close, but he thinks he's going to be done in time for the inspection. Should the inspection pass, GSU um, is, is fully aware. And they, had, they advised me that as soon as they have a, a pass from the ESA, that the streetlights will be connected. So I'm, I'm very hopeful that it, it will be uh, done this week. Um, the next one is, is our Penisipal East Sidewalk Project. Um, the, our consultant did reach out again to the MOECC last week for an update. I have not received any update as of, as of today, uh, nor has uh, EXP our, our consultant. Um, so in speaking with the contractor um, who, who was awarded the contract, he's, he's you know, suggesting we, we wait for, because pouring concrete at this time of year is, is we're not going to have a, a, a good final product. Um, so he's uh, strongly suggesting that we wait uh, and until next spring to, uh, to get this project done. And the fact that we don't have the approval for with, from the MOECC, um, I would uh, support that recommendation. Um, the Nipissing sidewalk, the concrete work is complete. Um, we did a walkthrough with the uh, contractor and the consultant, so we identified uh, some um, deficiencies where uh, topsoil needs to be graded along the fence of the cemetery. Um, some a gravel needs to be, uh, you know, butted up against the sidewalk. The contractor uh, suggested that that we not uh, finish and seed this year because he says throughout the winter, the spring. Uh, it's going to be muddy. It's going to be a mess. You know, our sidewalk plows will likely, you know, take some some uh, some topsoil out. So he he's recommending just let's wait, and then in the spring he'll go back and and you know level everything off and uh, seed, and and that way we'll uh, we'll have a better uh, end product. 
Um, the next one is the uh, street, famous street lights on uh, Highway 64 for Eugène and the Rainville. Um, the Rainville street light is ready to go. So the contractor was waiting on uh, Hydro One. Um, we finally got Hydro One to meet us out there last Friday. Um, Hydro One identified a pole for the Eugene street light where I guess where the, where the dip is to come down the pole and, and connect the street light, the pole needs to be changed. And apparently this pole will be a cost to the municipality. Now I, I haven't, I, I requested more information from Hydro One, um, but, but the, the, uh, my contact at Hydro One did not talk to the field person. So as soon as I get that piece of information, um, I'll, I'll bring it back to council. But, but as of now, it it's, uh, seems like it's one thing after another. Uh, so there's a pole that needs to be changed before the final connection for the Eugene light. Um, I did ask the contractor if at least we could connect the Rainville light. Um, and I have not heard back from him. I'm assuming he's going to want to do both. At, you know, if he's going to bring his bucket truck out, he's going to want to do both at the same time. But I'll, I'll keep pushing to at least get uh, the Rainville done. And that was my, uh, my brief update. Thank you very much, Sean. And now uh, we'll go uh, around the table. Can you help me with that? Uh, who, who's next after me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I have any. Chris? Chris. Okay, Chris, uh, do you have any questions for Sean? Yeah, I just have one question. So I, I just, the uh, fact that the, I find that interesting and strange, and perhaps I don't know enough about it, but how, how does a poll become a cost to the municipality? Because I thought that any pool that uh, Hydro One had, that they assume that and then everybody pays for the infrastructure via their service delivery charge, which is more than my electricity. So how do we get stuck with a pool? I guess that's, I just don't understand how it works. Thank you. I'll definitely uh, get some answers for you, Chris. I, I'm, I'm exactly on board with you. Why is it that it's a municipal responsibility when you know there it's it's a service that that they provide? So I'm not 100% sure why, but I'll, I'll definitely find out. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll go to uh, Roly. Roly, have any questions? Uh, no, actually, uh, just no questions, just a comment. Um, well, I'm I'm happy to see that uh, things are moving forward, and uh, uh, I think you're bang on. Uh, uh, Sean, when you're saying that the contractor finished the work next spring, because this time of the year, it's halfway frozen right now. So definitely uh, he's bang on on this. So said that you're doing a fine job. Thank you. So now we'll go to Leo. Hey, thank Leo. You, Mr. Yeah, my only, my only comment is about the, uh, the poll. Uh, if we didn't request a light room, it's uh, because we request a light, now the poll is no good. That's the way I can understand. John, absolutely, absolutely, um, and again, I, I will, I will find out and get some answers because I was also uh, shocked when when uh, I received the email. Okay, thank you, thank you, Leo, uh, Councillor Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, great job, good report. <laughs> Keep us on. Uh, you're keeping us abreast of what's going on. Thank you, Dan, Councillor Conseiller Denis. Denis, Denis, met on song. Your sound. Okay, okay, okay. I pense que Sean sait que je vais te demander, ma femme. Ça n'a pas de sens, là. Tu penses-tu? Deux pôles, là, ça a pris un petit d'un an, là. Mais c'est-tu la pôle droite en arrière de l'autre qui fait défaut? C'est ça. C'est pas la pôle que Beaulieu a posé. Non, pas la pôle neuve. Non, non, c'est celui qu'il faut aller chercher le pouvoir. C'est celle-là que apparemment qu elle, elle est pas assez forte ou d'un coup elle est plus bonne. So, je ne sais pas, mais je vais m'informer puis je, je sais ça n'a pas de bon sens. Euh, C'est une affaire après l'autre, mais je vais m'informer puis. Euh, C'est pas, pas à cause de, ma, de la lumière que la peau est, a fait défaut. Là. Je ne pense pas, pense pas que nous autres on l'aurait payé pour ça. Là. Du tout, du tout. So, je, vais, je vais définitivement m'informer. Mais dans, dans le budget, tu vas demander pour cinq autres si on est bon pour un autre deux ans. Merci, <rire> Denis. Ce conseiller Lise. 
She said I'm mute. Do you unmute, Elise? Lise? Prello, je t'apprello, ça va beaucoup se faire du max à l'air. Écoute, euh, Sean, euh, le, pour le sidewalk euh, de Népessing, euh, je ne sais pas comment j'ai eu d'appel par là des gens. Ils sont très, très, très satisfaits. Everybody is so happy about it. It's, uh, I walked it myself. It's nice. I went to, uh, you're right, someplace at the cemetery, but I knew it would be fixed. I agree with the fact that you should wait for the spring to... Uh, le sommet, là, pas de problème, là. Fait que ça, c'est vraiment un bel job. Merci beaucoup. Euh, ça, ça, a fait, ça, ça a pris du temps, mais euh, c'est beau. Bel job. Euh, la deuxième chose que je... C'est le fameux projet, ça a bélangé. Euh, je veux dire, j'ai encore des appels. De, je n'ai pas de problème d'avoir des appels, là, mais euh, ils ont eu une lettre au mois de juin que ça commencerait, puis on est rendu. Puis la manière, la façon que ça va, j'en doute bien gros qu'il n'y a rien qui va partir cette année. Je me demande, euh, euh, ben, premièrement, j'aimerais que tu me répondes oui ou non si c'est quelque chose qui va se passer cette année. Parce que la dernière fois qu'on s'est parlé, tu m'avais dit deux semaines, mais qui était supposé, mais... Euh, non, je, le dernier update qu'on qu a fait, c'est que pendant qu'on faisait les démarches, euh, je me suis aperçu qu'il y, y a des problèmes avec les égouts. Euh, on a une pipe de 12 pouces qui est réduite à 8, qui remonte à 12. Le petit bout de 8, il faut, faut changer ça parce qu'on euh, a une, euh, des list stations, des systèmes de pompe pour, pour les égouts. Il euh, y en a une sur la rue euh, du Mouchel, puis il y en a une autre sur la rue Cholette. Quand les deux partent en même temps, euh, ça, ça fait euh, déborder, là, disons, là, euh, sur backups. Dans, sur la rue Bélanger. Donc, on veut adresser ça avant de paver, avant de... Euh, donc, ça, c'est des, des imprévus que quand on faisait nos recherches, on, on, on s'est aperçu. Euh, mais cette année, justement, on est en train de faire le design work pour faire ça, pour, pour avoir les permis, les ICA, pour pas qu'on se fasse prendre comme cette année, on a appliqué au mois de mai, puis on n'en a encore pas pour le, le, le trottoir. Donc, cette année, là, on, va, on va le faire au mois de janvier pour être certain qu'on puisse aller en construction l'été prochain. Alors, si je veux faire un petit sommaire, ça n'arrivera pas cette année. Avec non, des... okay. pas une construction, mais le design work is getting done this year. OK, mais je me demande, euh, euh, je ne sais pas si c'est possible, je ne sais pas si c'est des pratiques, parce que je ne vais pas commencer à ouvrir une canne de verre, là. mais euh, quand, que, quand que les résidents ont des lettres de main pour dire ça va commencer en juin, puis qu'il y a des délais, vraiment. Il me semble que, tu sais, comme moi, je n'ai pas de problème de répondre aux questions. À chaque fois que je t'ai demandé, tu m'as répondu, je, je passe les, les réponses, mais garde là encore là, 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 là ça ne se fait pas pantoute. Quand que la décision est prise, qu'il y a des choses qui arrivent, c'est-tu possible, Sean, peut-être d'avoir un système en place que les résidents sont abusés? Um... <rire> c'est un petit peu, de, de, comme disent, un catch-22. Um... On essaye d'être de, de, avenant avec l'information. Tu sais, si on n'avait rien envoyé aux résidents, comme dans les années passées, là, on n'envoyait pas ça. La communication, c'était minime. On n'envoyait pas de lettre de demande. Donc, quand il n'y a rien qui se passait, il n'y avait pas de rien qui non, se faisait. Ben, so, uh, dame de few do, dame de few don't, comme ils disent. Mais euh, définitivement, euh, quand un projet de, de cette... Je serais prêt à, à dire que oui, euh, c'est un peu de ma faute, que oui, j'aurais pu envoyer une lettre euh, de suivi disant qu'il y a eu des imprévus, euh, il va y avoir un délai au projet ou quelque chose comme ça. Ou même si quelque chose posté, quelque chose, ou la, je ne sais pas, là, parce que c'est, euh, comme je te dis, moi, je n'ai pas de problème à répondre aux questions, là, mais ça vient, il euh, ne faut pas oublier des fois qu'on fait toute la même chose, vous shoot de messenger. Mm -hmm. Ça fait que euh, c'est euh, quelque chose, c'est important, là. Euh, puis la, la chose, je me demandais, parce qu'avant, Sean, avant, tu nous faisais ça en rapport, parce que je pense qu'on on, on a beaucoup de discussions, puis on dit qu'on passe bien du temps à discuter, puis blablabla. Bla, bla. Comme à ce soir, là, ça te prend à peu près cinq minutes de faire la revue, une bonne revue, excellent. Mais si on aurait eu ça écrit, on n'aurait rien qu'à poser nos questions. On compose quand on fait le tour. Sais-tu, c'est quoi, y a-tu... Euh, So Parce que juste rapport, à ça. Un rapport par écrit? Un rapport par écrit qu'on a eu le temps de se préparer. Parce que là, de plus en plus, on dirait que je ne sais pas c'est quoi. Là, ça, c'est mon opinion personnelle. Mais c'est difficile à se préparer pour des réunions. 
quand on, on a un qu'un nom, qu'est-ce qu'on va parler, mais on ne sait pas ce qu'on va parler. Puis on dit, on, on se fait dire que nous, nous, nos rencontres sont trop longues, trop de discussions, mais si on aurait des rapports pour se préparer, je pense que ça irait mieux. Ça, fait que, on le faisait deux jours d'un passé. Je sais que vous avez bien du travail, ça, c'est pas ça, que c'est pas dit que vous n'avez pas de non, travail, là, mais... C'est pas plus d'ouvrage, c'est écrit par, quand même. Okay. Fait que même, ça débiterait à la rencontre même, fait même si on sauve 25 minutes, ça sauvera 5 minutes. Merci, Lise. Merci. Merci. Okay, merci. merci beaucoup pour l'ouvrage, Sean. Thank you. OK, là, je, on va demander à Mme Duane, la mairesse, si elle a des questions. Ou des commentaires. Ou des commentaires. OK. Uh, merci, uh, M. le Président. Je veux remercier Sean uh, pour le travail du côté de travaux publics et OISO. Thank you for your work. Because I know it's not easy because, um, you know what, there's so many requests, so many complaints, so much work to get done. So, Extend a good thank you to your entire team. Um, un des, uh, je suis complètement d'accord avec la situation du trottoir à Burner. Um, avec uh, le temps de l'année, c'est pas le temps de commencer à couler du ciment. But I do have some questions, and I think um, I need to understand the process. Um, was there a delay from the consultant in submitting the additional information and the fee for the application on behalf of the municipality? Parce que j'ai pu comprendre au mois d'août que notre application avait été soumise, que le ministère avait demandé plus d'informations et que le consultant avait donné cette information-là and we were in the queue. But in September, after our meeting of September 15th, because the province came out with all this new legislation, Bill 197, we're streamlining each ministry to move forward and uh, to make it much more easy for municipalities to move forward with projects, I reached out to our local MPP and said, you know what? We need your support. We need your assistance for getting a roadblock with the ministry and getting a compliance assessment approval for a sidewalk. So the MPP reached out to the ministry and then the ministry comes back and says, well, We only got the additional information and the fee from the consultant September 17th. So did the consultant um, do the due diligence of providing the additional information when it was requested? Because it seems that there's been a delay in submitting that information. So, so back in May, at the original uh, application, um, if you looked on the MOECC website, They encourage people to uh, submit applications via the web. The consultant did that. And on the web, it indicated that the fees would be paid at a later date because of the new application system because of COVID-19. And it only came to light. So the only time we heard back from the MOECC was when they said, well, we don't, we don't have the fees. At that point, the consultant got right away and submitted the old-fashioned paper way and got it into the MOECC. So, okay. you know, to, to, to lay blame on, on anybody, I think is, uh, you know, is, is unwarranted. Uh, the, the, the consultant, and, and I'm, I'm hard on our consultants because, uh, you know, they don't always, uh, you know, uh, you know, Boucher dans le tuc, like they say. Right. But, but, you know, in this case, I, I think uh, the consultant did, did his job. And um, it, it's, it's because of the electronic application and, and the, the confusion with the fee that, uh, that you know, that, and, and of course, the MOECC didn't get back to us until September, until Um, I, I think council got involved and, and got the actual file number, and that's when the MOECC, the MOECC got back to us and said, uh, we're missing this, uh, your fee, and uh, okay. that's when the RXP applied uh, paper. Uh, I, I acknowledge that you, um, I know that you're very diligent in making sure that our contractors and consultants do the, the work that they've been uh, requested on behalf of the municipality. I just bring it up because I thought it was pretty coincidental that the municipality provides the info to the MPP on September 16th and September 17th, the ministry says, 
we just got this additional information and the fee from the consultant a day after. Face value, it just seemed odd that it, you know, was one day after the inquiry from the MPP. But good news is that we know that everything has been submitted, our fee is paid, and um, we don't plan on doing the work until the spring. So keep our fingers crossed, we should receive the compliance assessment order from the ministry prior to them. Um, congrats for the great work on Nipissing, that's excellent. Uh, what an enhancement to the community. It really, really makes a big difference. Um, there was also the issue, you know, we talked about the street lights. Um, I find it very disheartening. And again, um, you know what? I know it's not our team that's doing the physical work, but this contract was given in 2019. It's been more than a year. It was part of the extra gas tax money that we got. The, the, uh, no, the street lights in Neving. Okay, yes, yeah. Yeah, so it's been more than a year well, that council made the decision of approving those two street lights. And today we're still having problems pertaining to the actual poll. So I'm hoping that that poll is gonna be free of charge to the municipality and that before Christmas, those lights, both lights are gonna be lighted. And hopefully that's gonna materialize. Um, the other issue was with recycling bins. Um, now, I don't know if that's part of your responsibilities as well. There were recycling bins that were gonna be refurbished by Public Works, assigned to Levine and Cash Bay. Jay saying no. The border, mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I think that this is out of scope. Uh, I think we've got the report from Public Works. Can you uh, per it perhaps send a line? It's, thing? In it's, in, it's environmental services. And uh, in fact, it was discussed at the Environmental Services Board last night, and there'll be a letter forthcoming to Council from the uh, board. Okay, well, thank you for the clarification I got. And the point of order, I'm still on capital, uh, Public Works uh, Capital Projects, and um, I didn't know that it was not part of Public Works Capital Projects. Now, um, I did submit an agenda item request for Pine Poultry Road. Um, and the reason I submitted that request is because I was being bombarded or receive, I should not use the word bombarded. I was CC'd on several emails pertaining to water issues for the road condition owned by the portion of West Nipissing and ditching. And I was hoping that it was gonna be part of public works this evening to let us know if there's- Point of order, and it's not on the- and uh, so why are we discussing Mr. That? Chair, uh, sorry, Dan, Dan, on the bottom of, the, of the, uh, his statement here, it does say that there are a few other small projects are ongoing as well. So she's asking whether or not this, so she has a right to ask whether or not uh, of other projects. To so the, uh, so, to, respond, so yeah. to respond, uh, it's an operational issue. Uh, the uh, person was contacted. Uh, it's part of capital next year, uh, and what the person was requesting was not doable by a municipality asking for a culvert on their property. It's an ongoing file, and uh, it will be addressed next year. Uh, information was sent to the owner, uh, I believe, within a day or so, uh, and so it's being addressed, but it's an operational issue. When these things happen, kindly forward them over to, the, uh, to myself if they're not getting satisfaction. And uh, I, I can look into it, but it, it really is, uh, it isn't a policy issue or anything that's going wrong. It's just somebody who's not liking the answer. Um, I'm not making reference strictly to one individual or property issue of one individual. There were also videos that were sent pertaining to the road that was underwater. And that vehicles so that, are traveling through Matt, water. Madam Mayor, so, but you answered the question, Jay. No, you have another co comment. So, do you want an answer to that? That's a uh, that that that's a beaver dam. 
uh, on a straight totally far away happens to be pine poultry, but has nothing to do with the quality of the road. You'd have to, you, you would have to raise the road another foot and a half uh, in order to, uh, to manage that. So that th those things happen no, no different than uh, Cache Lake or Deer Lake or, or, or what have you. And that matter was addressed uh, as soon as the water uh, went over the road. In fact, I can tell you that Deer Lake uh, was underwater as well. And uh, that's simply uh, a service call to uh, Public Works and they're very quick at handling it. Okay, well, you know what, Mr. Chair? Um, my form was just to get an update pertaining to the set status of Pine Poultry Road West. And if there was any planned capital work in the Point of, order, point of order, point of order. Now, hold on, Mr. Dan, listen. She just wants to bring up the issue. It's, it's written right here. PW has other issues that he may, may want to talk about. And she has a right to bring up these issues because that's that's what we're here for. That's so that we can time. further discuss them. Or right, she's going to, I assume she's going to ask that this be put on for next year's capital. Well, that's what I want. Yeah. That was the plan. It already is. That, okay. It already is. You. Okay, no, well, you know what? It's cute. I'm being, um, you know, I find it frustrating because I submitted the agenda request form for this specific road and I assumed that it was going to hit public works just to get an update. And the simple update in the event that I get more queries to say, you know, staff is looking at it. And they're going to come back with a report to council to let us know if it's going to be Mr. Part Chair, of a future please. capital work we project. Um, and I was not move informed. forward, please. You know what? Put a border. Dan, you know what? You know Dan, what? You're, a, Dan, you're you're disturbing the people here. Just say what you have to say when I'm in this. Well, okay. I'm looking forward to finding out Pine Poultry Road status in our future capital work project to see if there's not going to be any work that's going to be done. That's what I was asking. Okay. It's on the okay. list next year. Thank you. My recommendation Thank you so in the future is just ask. Yeah. And if I just may recommend, Mr. Chair, in the future, if we do submit a form pertaining to a request, let us know if it's going to be dealt with or not dealt with. And it would avoid asking these questions in an open meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Lise, then, question? Yes, I do have a question. It's a, a question. It's not really a question. It's regarding that. And here we have Sean here that's sitting there. And we and this is exactly why I brought the point. Is Sean what I wrote a report tonight and we would have received it. We would have known that it was not on his report. And here he's sitting down and we're blasting it with questions that was not planned for him to tell us tonight. So, and another thing is, you know, it's really, really completely a lack of respect from some counselor interrupting it, especially when the mayor is talking. The mayor has as much right as ask question to any of us. So it's getting to a point that it's ridiculous. When you want to be a leader, you got to start as a team. And if you cannot be showing leadership as a team and not let your team worker talk, well, you have an issue there. Right. So that's my point. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Jay. Okay. Sean. If I can just comment, uh, Lee, okay. on your point with respect to the report, I can indicate, and the chair will be aware of that, is that uh, Sean, prior to taking holidays last week, indicated uh, or, or sent his chairs an email. And the chair basically uh, responded by asking if he can share with council. And I said, well, you know, why don't we put it on the agenda? And that's why that happened. So it was okay. kind of a, uh, you know, in terms of uh, transparency, that's why it happened that way. And Sean wasn't even aware he was on the agenda until I told him yesterday. And Just as comment, point of that. Jay, I understand. And I said, I accept that when I brought it up. Okay, but that, that's just another occasion to prove that when we have something in writing and prepare for the meeting, maybe we don't lo we'd lose that valuable time and those interruptions when people don't have the patient to wait for the question to be asked. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Lise. Thank you, uh, Jay, for your response. So, uh, Sean, uh, uh, you know, you're sitting there listening, but, you know, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for for doing what you're doing and uh, a special thank you to to your team as well who are doing a phenomenal job and i hope you you know good luck on the, the rest of the year and i know you're ahead of things and it's not your fault that things are being pushed back I, you know you understand mm -hmm. you explained yourself 
And we understand as we're dealing with the other agencies, government, and this is why we were lagging behind. And I'm glad to see that you did cross, finally cross the highway and there's gonna be a connection. We'll be opening up King Street soon, I hope. And then uh, we'll be back to normal. So great job, Sean. Uh, so thank you for, for coming to the meeting and we'll see you the next time you come. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Madame Medes. Okay. On procede avec, um, we move on to planning, planification. Okay, what we I, have, I'll pass it on to our clerk to provide us an overview of the memo pertaining to the subject matter of E1. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, as uh, councillors are aware, there was uh, a fair bit of concern raised um, following the uh, Planning Advisory Committee meeting that was held in September uh, concerning the project. Um, subsequently, we did find out that there was a small technical error made uh, on behalf of by staff with regard to posting of the actual public notice sign. And as a result, and in fairness to the residents, uh, both for and against, and to the proponent, um, perhaps it might be prudent to send it back to planning advisory committee meeting um, for the month of December in order that everybody has the opportunity to, to speak to the matter and have their point, I believe, or CAO wants to say something. Um, well, from, from an order perspective, you need to read the resolution and then comment on it and then have a motion to refer if they're in agreement. So okay. you, have, you have a resolution have to read the resolution and table it before you have these discussions. But Thanks. Uh, I was just going to let Mel finish before reading the resolution and I was just going to bring up an issue. Well, Jay, I mean, I, before table reading, I know I understand here, but the subject matter was deferred to November 17. Members of council voted on the deferral based on the request the deferral made by Councillor Rowley. Councillor Rowley right. identified that there were environmental concerns pertaining to water flows from Deer Lake to Bev River. I do know that with the correspondence that we got from the planner, there's a engineering report and I was gonna ask, can we deal with this engineering report, the deferral issue, so we're on the same page and then deal with the issue of the referral? You still need to uh, put the resolution back on the table and then discuss all of that. Okay, after. perfect. Just procedure. Uh, may I have a perfect. mover and a seconder, please? Yvonne. And Conseil Chris. It is moved by Councillor Duhame and seconded by Councillor Fisher. We have resolved the bylaw number 202061 being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 2014-45 to rezone certain lands located on Old Highway 17 from Rural Residential Zone to Rural Residential Exception Zone 3 shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Okay, so I guess the first point, can we deal with the issue of why it was deferred? Because we all supported the deferral. There was a concern raised by uh, Councillor Rowley for environmental issues. So does it mean that we can deal with the report from the engineering firm first? before dealing with a request for the referral? I guess my question would be, yeah, well, let's just the question would be through. that, is there an environmental impact? And do we depend or rely on the information that was given to us uh, in our package by the company that provided feedback pertaining to the water, pertaining to the uh, overflow of water and pertaining to any uh, dish, potential risk of discharge in the river and also making reference to um, a suitable tile bed. My interpretation after reading this, there's no environmental impact. Am I right or in, not right? Jay. Well, the only thing I would the only thing I would uh, suggest, just again procedurally or logically, uh, is that if uh, if you uh, accept Melanie's uh, re reasoning for uh, going back to the drawing board 
which is to take it back to the planning committee, then I think the planning committee needs to have all of this discussion, take a stand and then come back. And then you have that discussion on the uh, report that you have once planning has had a second kick at it. Um, because all of these things will be discussed at committee level and then brought back to council. So if committee says they're in favor of the rezoning or they're not in favor of the rezoning, uh, or I guess if they're not in favor of the rezoning, then uh, yeah, that raises an issue, Mel. If, if, if the committee votes it down, does it even come back here? Well, no. there's still a record. Yes, it still has to come to council under the act because it is actually a council decision. They're only a recommending committee. Oh, so it's recommendation. So I guess yep. uh, my original point then is, though you'd want to talk about it now, perhaps if you're going to be saying you're bringing the whole file back because of circulation back to, uh, you know, back to the committee, then my recommendation procedurally so that there are no hiccups where you've debated something here piecemeal, then you brought it to committee or whatever, you might be leaving uh, people who are objectors uh, or, or proponents, depending, some procedural room for an appeal. Okay, but I guess um, I understand that point, but uh, it was brought at this table that there were environmental concerns and wanting information on whether or not if there was any environmental issues. So I guess uh, being here at the table of council, the fact that it was being brought back November 17th with that information, I'm asking the question, are there any environmental concerns as per what was provided to us, yes or no? Based on the report provided by the proponent, the, the um, engineers do not believe there are any environmental concerns. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions pertaining to the engineering report provided? None. Okay, now dealing with the request for the referral for it to go back to planning board. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand the process. We're making recommendation that it goes back to the planning board to review the circulation um what was not no. done with, no no okay, just uh, the proper mean, circulation will happen the, the 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 reason it's going back to the planning board is she, uh, melanie is going to do it with the proper circulation and it'll be rediscussed there and then brought back here just okay. to ensure that really uh you didn't make a mistake before you go to the uh help Okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't understand because it cut. So are we saying that we want to recirculate everyone? Okay. Yes. And that's because the circulation the first time was not done in to all the adjacent landowners? Um, through you, it was done to all the landowners required under the Planning Act. However, there's a requirement under the Planning Act that an actual physical sign be posted on the property. Okay. That was overlooked. There was a mistake okay. made there. So okay. in prudence, we will still circulate the same radius as we did before, but the sign okay. will be installed and then we'll move forward, but take it back to planning. Okay, and if uh, assuming that we did not go up, bring it back to planning, does it expose, um, um, does it increase the risk of uh, being challenged by doing an appeal and that the planning board would be at risk of losing the appeal? Yes. Okay, I understand. So now we're dealing with the resolution for referral to the planning board. Are there any objections? I need a mover and a seconder for the referral. Okay. Conseil Dan, Conseil Alice. Are there any objections? None? Okay. So the subject matter is being referred back to planning board. A um, mover and a second for the next resolution. Councillor Chris. Councillor Leo. Moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Mallet 
It resolved that bylaw number 2020-65 being a bylaw imposing special annual, annual drainage rates upon lands in, in respect of which money is borrowed under the Tile Drainage Act uh, under an application made by Stephen Gilnett for part of lot two concession two in the township of McPherson in the municipality of West Nipissing shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Any objections? All in favor, carried, adopted. Uh, mover and a seconder for the road assumption. Cosi Bon, Cosi Chris. Is moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Duhane, be it resolved that bylaw number 202066, being a bylaw to accept, assume, and dedicate lands for public highway purposes, shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Part of Lot 5, Concession A, Part 136, hour 14475 in the Township of Springer, being part of the traveled road known as Chemin Bay Street in Sturgeon Falls. All in favor? Carried, adoptee. A mover and a second for the next resolution. Cosi Denis, Cosi Rowley. It is moved by Councillor Denise Senecal and seconded by Councillor Letter B. Be it resolved that an application for a tile loan made under the Tile Drainage Act by Northland Farms and Contracting Inc. for the property described below in the amount of $50,000 be accepted pending financing by the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, uh, property located on Lafreniere Road being part of Lot 5, Concession 2 in the Township of McPherson. All in favor? Carried, adoptee. We proceed with correspondence and accounts. Les courriers et comptes. Um, we're in a seconder for the first resolution. Councillor Chris Cossilio. It is moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Mallette. Be it resolved that the minutes of the meeting of council held on November the 3rd, 2020 be adopted as presented. Any questions or comments? I did have just one question. I know that I've asked the CEO the question as well. Uh, there's one item under section L, closed meeting, uh, number three, Cano update. And that one was not deferred to our closed session for this evening. My interpretation was that we were dealing with two different issues. On November 3rd, we dealt with the letter, which was a public document. And uh, we did have a memo for Cano under closed session num November 3rd, which council was not duly informed of what the issue was. And I'd request that we'd add it to our committee of the whole this evening. So to respond to you why it wasn't added, um, again, uh, is that when Cano provided, this was put on a letter based on the, uh, the uh, financial statements uh, that were provided. And then uh, subsequent to that, we received the letter which made uh, from a staff perspective, and it was staff driven, uh, from a staff perspective, no longer relevant. So it was not pursued because it wasn't relevant. Okay, well, I didn't highlight what was the subject matter on the memo because that memo was part of our closed session meeting. But, no, but um, I indicated that to you several times, Your Worship. Well, I know you did, and I provided you with the memo, but anyway, I'll bring it up at our closed session and call it to a vote. But I just wanted to make sure that it was duly noted and identified this evening that it wasn't deferred and not on our committee closed session meeting for this evening. Thank you. So, so procedurally, it's not on the closed session, so it's not going on the closed session unless you have some sort of unanimous uh, change to the agenda right now. Um, well, and right. Uh, as I repeat again, you're, you're, you know, you're, 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 you're forcing something that's actually not an issue anymore because uh, they've, uh, they indicated a letter indicating exactly what we were going to bring to you. So uh, you have to trust your staff when we say it's no longer relevant, it's no longer relevant. Well, I'm not debating the issue now, Jay, and uh, you know what, if that would be the explanation provided, um, it would be accepted. Thank you. So 
um, based that there's no other questions or comments pertaining to the minutes. All in favor? Carried. Adopted. Is there a mover and a seconder for the next item? Councillor Chris, Conseil Yvonne. It is moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Duhame. Be it resolved that the minutes of the West Nipissing Planning Advisory Committee meeting held on September the 28th, 2020, be adopted as presented. Everyone in favor, en favor. Adopted, carried. Mover and a seconder for the next resolution. Okay. Councillor Chris. Conseil de Yo. Moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Mallette. Be it resolved that the minutes of the following boards and committees be received. West Nipissing Committee of Adjustment meeting held on September the 28th, 2020. All in favor? Harry Adopte. We have to stop her and pause. They give us the cup. We leave the meeting. Our last two. It almost sounded like a recording. Cosi <laughs> Leo. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so we still need a uh, mover and a seconder to approve the disbursements. So we'll say Cosi Leo. He volunteered. Cosi Chris. It is moved by Councillor Millette and seconded by Councillor Fisher. Be it resolved that the accounts payable disbursement sheets for September 2020 be received. Are there any questions or comments? Conseil Alice, Conseil Yvonne, Conseil Alice. Je m'en viens, je m'en viens. Écoute, c'est juste une clarification, just a clarification because uh, there's a company, Pro X Landscaping Limited. It's a contractor, but uh, work done in a land site. I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the connection uh, doing landscaping in a land site. So uh, it's at which page. Uh, Councilor Elise, just uh, which number? Well, it's uh, uh, there. That's true. There's number two seventeen, page four. Okay, thank you. I just a clarification on that, and also a clarification on. And I think I know what it is, but the waterfront development, it's its what? It's where? Which, I think uh, I know. Which number, uh, Conseil Alice? Uh, well, there's a different number. Uh, let's say 264. There's a lot of entry for waterfront front development. So, uh, and this one, I got 263, okay. 264, 65. So I, I think I know. I just want to make sure. Okay. So pertaining to your first question, I'll directed to Alyssa, possibly. So, so ProX, their name may be ProX Landscaping, but ProX is, is not uh, solely a, a landscaping company. They do all kinds of dirt moving things and ditching and, um, you know, supply material. So they're, they're not strictly a, a landscaping company. Um, and then the waterfront development is at the marina site. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Alicia. But uh, so, where is that company from? Pro X, because when you know, it's it's it just jumped into my eyes when I say okay, landscaping, and we're talking about land sites. So that's why I I can understand they're doing more. So, but the name doesn't say what they're doing, right? Yeah, they they're a West Nipissing company. They are. Yep. Okay. I tried yes, to uh, find. I tried to find it, and uh, I didn't see it. Okay. They're in La Vigne. Councillor Lees? Okay. I don't They're know. I Vigne. tried to find it and I didn't I didn't find I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, you got sure. Thank you. I got my answer. You got your answers, Cosi Yvonne. Uh, thank you, Madame Mares. Uh, I am page uh, two, uh, uh, number 123. Uh, and I'm just wondering uh, what that could be, Alyssa. Uh, it's uh, uh, Miscellaneous costs for two thousand five hundred and ninety dollars. So, Mel, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the the burial for um, an indigent person. A what? I'm sorry. The burial um, for what? An indigent person. So, if someone if someone passes away that they don't have a uh, there's then, there's no one else to take responsibility for them. They're left with no funds. Um, the municipality is on the hook for the burial. Oh, okay. Costs. Okay. Mm. Okay. Great. 
nice to know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. So, if there's no further questions, coming back to the resolution, all in favor? Carried. Adopted. We proceed to new business at Bonneville. No, the, the correspondence, Madam Mayor, is for, uh, for well, roll call. That is item. Yeah, I know. I just noticed it's because it didn't have an attached resolution. Okay, there is a deadline date to submit a request for a delegation for the Roma Conference 2021. The conference is going to be virtual. Um, I'll just do a quick roundtable to see if there's any delegation issues or items that uh, the municipality would like to apply for. Oh. The deadline that we need to give direction to staff is November 30th. Did you have anything, Cosi Yvonne? Well, uh, no? Not really, no. Okay. Cosi Rulli? Yes, I have a, I'd like a delegation with the Minister of MTO, Caroline Maroney, on the uh, 539A rehabilitation. Okay, uh, the 539A rehabilitation. Are you going to be able to send uh, more info to all members of council and to staff to that request? Uh, I, I'm I aware. Could give you, uh, I could give you the info, but Jay is aware, yes. I'm aware of it. Okay, well, I'm if aware. it's possible to share that information, because normally when we do request a delegation, we sort of have an idea what it's all about. And as mayor, I a have a couple of years ago, uh, we met with, and you were present, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, with uh, the then uh, Northeast Region Director Eric Doidge and some staff about that um, about that um, highway. Uh, the highway is being done, but there were promises made about a different level or standard of uh, pavement uh, right in the town proper. If you recall, it mm -hmm. would appear that they have. And we're trying to uh, reach um, uh, Mr. Doidge, but he's actually uh, now the assistant deputy minister. So he's not as uh, accessible and uh, we've been blocked off. And that's why, uh, and, and so that's the subject. Okay, thank you. So 539A, Councillor Chris. No, I don't have anything. Okay, Conseil Leo. Yes, uh, with the Chateau, with the, the funding redevelopment. And the uh, funding we uh, we're missing. I don't know if we uh, you and uh, with uh, Chair Lees and uh, and yourself, Madam Mayor, me myself, whoever's assist on the board. Okay. Uh, with uh, with uh, I forget the minister of uh, long minister of long term uh, care and to have a delegation. That's awesome. Okay. That subject matter, we'll discuss it at our um, Au Chateau board meeting tomorrow. And if that's the direction to take, then we'll send notification to our clerk. Um, Conseil Dan? No, thank you. Conseil Denis? No, nothing. Okay, Conseil Alice? No? Okay, if there's a request for the Minister of Transportation, I'd also like to add the issue about uh, the turning lane, uh, expanding the turning lane on Le Blanc Le Blanc Road. Yes. Okay, because we did receive correspondence, probably I'd say more than a year ago, identifying that they were studying the matter, um, were right on. the type of vehicle that are accessing that road between um, recreational and between industrial um, is a safety issue. So that should also be added to the request for the Minister of Transportation. And Madam Mayor? Madam Mayor? Yes, 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 yes we did get, we, I, I think we did get a letter saying that when the, uh, uh, from, from North Bay, I forget from, the, from whom, uh, but they were, it's it's a, not a fait accompli, but when you redo, uh, I was 17 and I would be part of the turning lane, if I remember correctly. About yes, two years. you are, and that's what I'm making reference to, Conseil Leo, and I had replied to that letter asking for a timeline and we were not provided with a timeline. So I think uh, if we just let issues slide throughout the years, well, you know what, we're at risk. It's better that we advocate and make sure that it's always on the radar and hopefully that it's get addressed sooner than later. 
Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's uh, direction for now. And the third one, well, we'll provide an update to uh, Milani pertaining to the Oshato situation. Now we move on to new business, uh, tax relief uh, for char charitable and non-profit organization. Um, there's going to be a resolution. Is there a mover and a seconder? Conseiller Chris, Conseiller Lise. It's moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Lee Senecal, where Section 361.4 of the Municipal Act, as amended, provides authority for the municipality to establish a tax rebate program for eligible charities for the purpose of giving them relief from taxes or amounts paid on account of taxes and eligible property they occupy. Be it resolved that the 2020 taxes for the organizations listed below be rebated in the amounts shown. Centre Culturel de la Vigne, Club d'Ajdol River Valley, Club Amitié Werner, Chevalier de Colombe Werner, Golden Age Club Sturgeon Foils and Joyeux Copain, and Collège Boreal for a total of $23,388.46. Okay, any questions or comments? Conseil Dan, Conseil Alice. And I'm wondering, does Golden Age Club Sturgeon Falls and Joyeux Campagne? I thought one of the uh, there was one that didn't exist anymore. Alyssa, they amalgamated. Yeah. So if they amalgamated, shouldn't it just be Club uh, Joyeux Campagne that we're we're giving the money to, or we're granting the uh, the rebate on taxes? What's the official name of the? Le Club d'Ajdal de Sturgeon Falls. C'est Joyeux Copain, I think. Please? Jo oui, c'est jo Joyeux Copain qui est le, le nom, mais euh, les deux, ils fonctionnent qui nomment les deux parce qu'ils ont le magamé les deux. Mais ah. c'est le... le, le ah, J'imagine peut-être que le lit, c'est en tir de Joyeux Copain. Là, je ne sais pas c'est quoi, là. Mais okay. ils sont toujours, ils se nomment parce qu'ils sont ensemble. Ils sont, ils sont en magamé. C'est pas comme c'est possible que tu parles des municipalités ensemble. Tu vas avoir... OK, c'est peut-être... Mais je pense, mais moi j'ai la même question. Je peux-tu aller là-dessus? Là oui, conseillise. OK, j'ai la même question là-dessus. Ça, c'est, euh, j'imagine, c'est euh, the total for the club uh, d'âge d'or and uh, les joyeux copains. Uh, the, the total of that is just the portion of the, the, what they're paying. That's mm -hmm. the, hey, Alicia, it's uh, so paying pretty big tax on that corner. That's correct. It should just be the uh, the portion that, that is kind of uh, um, connected to their uh, program, their space. The space. Yeah. yeah. So that means if you take everything, it's a pretty big, big amount of tax uh, yearly for that building. I don't know off the top of my head what the the building is. No, no, I don't. I don't want to need to know. But I, when you look at a portion, it, it's just using a portion of the building, like the, the well, it's a big portion, but. Okay, no, okay, thank you. Got my answer. Okay. Madam Mayor, I have a question, Madam Mayor. Conseil Leo. Yes, Chevrolet uh, Caron, the Werner, aren't these, didn't they sell that building? I, I believe this anymore. I believe they did, but um, I, imagine that, I imagine that they still own the building for a portion of the year 2020. Okay, okay. Now I'll just, that, I'll just. Would that be the correct answer, Alyssa? I actually, yeah, I don't know when they, when it would have changed, changed hands, um, but. Um, October. Yeah. In October. Okay. So okay. can we, can we, does it make a difference? No, uh, that's okay. No, that's okay. No, that's, I it was, that's fine. Okay. You got the answer, Kossi Leo. I was asking just a question pertaining to the resolution. Do we need, does it have to be the girl, la grammar? L'autographe de l'organisation, does it have to be corrected or can we adopt it this way? Um, it can be adopted the way it is. That's just um, sort of a small clerical. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to see if it made a difference or not. Okay. So um, based on what's being presented, um, all in paper. Can I, can I ask a question first, please? Sure, Kosi, Chris. So I did just for so I get down to the bottom and I get college Boreal and I notice that's forty percent and I perfectly understand why all the other ones are there but perhaps somebody could give me uh, why why is college Boreal there how is that a charitable organization 
Okay, I'll pass it to our director of corporate services. So it's it's not actually the, the college, which is why they're not getting the full write off, but they have the, the foundation um, occupies a, a, a space within the, the college. So the foundation is the charitable organization, which is why they get just the percentage of the, the write off then. Okay, thank you. Okay, so all in favor? Carried, adopted. The next item, we also need a mover and a seconder. Conseil Leo, Conseil Chris. Moved by Councillor Mallette and seconded by Councillor Fisher. Whereas at a meeting held on November the 3rd, 2020, Council for the West Nipissing Municipality reviewed and amended workplace violence and harassment policy. Be it therefore resolved that Council for the West Nipissing Municipality approves the amended workplace violence and harassment policy number 2011-070 as presented, which shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. And be it further resolved that the amended workplace violence and harassment policy shall form part of the policy manual, replacing both the previous workplace violence and harassment policy and the sexual harassment policy number 2016-339. Okay, any questions? We discussed this uh, at our last meeting. There were uh, issues identified, you know, as potential amendments. Conseil Yvon? None? No, I, okay. I read it. I, I'm okay with it. Conseil Chris? No worries. Okay, Conseil Rowley? It's okay. Conseil Leo? Good. Conseil Denis? Good. Conseil Dan? Okay. Conseil Alice? Okay. Okay. So based on that, it's carried, adopted. Madam well, Mayor, we need a motion to extend the meeting at 9.30, 9.29. Okay, I had, is there a mover and a seconder, Conseil Yvonne, Conseil Chris, to extend our curfew beyond 9.30? It is moved by Councillor Jaham and seconded by Councillor Fisher. Be it resolved that the meeting be extended past the curfew to extend to 10.30. Okay, is everyone in agreement? No, I'm against. Okay, so you. <laughs> Cosi just have to say. <laughs> it's okay, Cosi Yvonne, are you in agreement? I'm fine yeah? yeah. And I saw the show of hands, Cosi Denino, Cosi Alice. Well, for this week, yeah. For this meeting, yes. But after that, we'll see. Okay, thank you. So it means it's carried. Now we do need a mover and a second there for item L. I three, uh, termination of the agreement with Cano, Cosi Chris, Cosi Ball. He's moved by Councillor Fisher and seconded by Councillor Duhain. Whereas on April the 23rd, 2019, Council for the West Nipissing Municipality entered into a financial partnership agreement with the Conseil des Arts de Nipissing West, Cano, as authorized by resolution number 2019-143. And whereas at the November 3rd, 2020 meeting, Council received a written request from Le Cano to terminate the financial partnership agreement with the municipality of West Nipissing, be it therefore resolved that Council for the West Nipissing Municipality agrees to terminate the financial partnership agreement with the Conseil des Arts de Nipissing West, Cano, effective as of the date of adoption of this resolution. Okay. All in favor? Carried, adopted. We move on to I-4. We'll need a mover and a seconder for that resolution. Conseil Leo, Conseil Chris. It is moved by Councillor Fentmanet and seconded by Councillor Fisher, be it resolved that by on number 2020-67, being a bylaw to regulate the care and control of dogs and cats and domestic animals in the West Nipissing Municipality shall come into force and take effect on the day it is passed. Okay, any questions or comments? Conseil Alice. Yes, I have a question. Um, at that meeting, uh, when we were uh, going around to, uh, to, to do the change, I did not count myself in the vote. So there's a mistake on the uh, zone. R3, R4, uh, we had, a, it was agreed, five people that agree, including myself, which I did not 
count on myself. That's why there was a mistake. It was uh, defeated, but it, it's not 2-2. Two, two. It should be, it should be 1-1. One, one. And I revised it and uh, Mel revised it also. I checked with Mel and that's exactly what had happened. And I, I know exactly the name of the people that had voted for it. So it's a mistake and uh, it should read uh, residential three, residential four, one dog, one cat okay. instead of two, two. Thank you. Okay, so there is a proposed amendment for R3, R4 to reflect 1-1 one, one, uh, as per discussions and direction of the committee of November 3rd. Conseil Chris. So I have some concerns about changing that because basically our bylaw was 2-2 two, two and, and so really potentially you're asking people to, you know, put down one, pick your pet, which one do you want to keep kind of thing. So, we, I mean, I would be okay with that, but we, I think we'd need to grandfather people in somehow. And so it, it, it opens things up, to my mind anyway, because uh, logically you keep two, two and everyone's fine, but suddenly you're telling people you're only allowed one dog, one cat. That's problematic in my mind anyway. Thank you. Well, yes, I agree. With, uh, you, I, I agree. I don't think that I've got to agree. I'm just saying that it should have been mentioned at the last meeting because we had voted and uh, it's very clear and Mel uh, can back me up because she had revised. I think she revised every meeting to make sure that the count is well done. And it was uh, five against four that to go one, one. I have no issue that we can discuss that to grandfather if some have. Uh, already have, but I mean, at this point of time, we have to go, but what we had agreed last week. Okay, and point of clarification, it wasn't 5-4, it was 5-3 for 1-1. One, one. I just wanted to clarify that. Oh yeah, so, true. <laughs> okay, and pertaining to the grandfather clause issue, I'm gonna ask our clerk to see if she's got yeah. information to provide. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Typically, when you pass a new bylaw that changes or restricts something that was in the past permitted, anybody who was doing it up to that point falls into what's called legal non-conforming. Assuming these animals are already, um, they're already registered and they have tags and whatnot, they wouldn't have to put one down if you had two and because okay. we changed it to one. Which okay, so anyone that would be in R3 and R4 and if, he, if they had two and two and because we change it to one and one, they would be able to maintain their two and two. It would be anyone in the future that would need to comply with the changes to the bylaw. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Kosi, Chris. So just to be a little, how about a grace period? Could we give a grace period of say a month to get three things registered and stuff like that? You know what I mean? If, if, you, if you're in R3, or if they, can we give them a grace period of say till January 1 or something to get their animals oh. registered? So, okay, are you, what, uh, what are you implying for a grace period? Are you talking about a proposed a month. Give okay. people a month. Give people a month to get if they're in or if they're in to get their pets registered. You know, and just just to be fair to people. So I so if I got if I live in R three R four right now, I got two I got two cats, two dogs, and they don't have to be registered. Then you know, give me a month to get them registered, kind of thing. Okay, uh, Milani. I just uh, thank you, Madam Chair. By our bylaw, they should already be registered mm -hmm. if they're in mm -hmm. compliance. So right now, if they're not, they're really not in, they're in violation of the bylaw if they're not registered. I understand that. It's, it's, you're talking about people's pets. So, you know, I'm trying to cut people a break, that's all. Okay. Well, the thing is, if people have have that before they were not registered, I don't think they would be questioned if they go and register them to see when did you got it. They were, I don't know, but uh, the fact remains we had a bylaw before and uh, now we're going with a new one. So, I mean, it's not a good way to say it. Like if they go, they should go and register it. And I... 
They had it. They had it. They uh, very easy to say I lose the tag. No, Jose Denis. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Chris has a point that uh, should give him a break here. Nobody was aware of a bylaw coming in, in effect, so they should have a chance to register their pets. And from now on, well, the bylaw will apply from January first. Let's say, yeah. yeah. They need to have a chance. Who wants to get rid of his pet? Yeah. Jose, uh, Mileni. Um, I just was going to point out that if, if council is in agreement to, to do such a thing, we, have, we could simply affect that by changing the resolution to pick a date upon which the bylaw would come into effect as okay. opposed to immediately, okay. if, if that's the way council wanted to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what, we're already um, our last meeting of November, so would we agree to have this proposed change effective January 1st? And January 1st, and as long as we have a mechanism, maybe, I don't know, share to the world that there's going to be changes with R3, R4, that the number is going to decrease to one and one, However, you are grandfathered. If you have two and two, you can maintain, but please ensure that your pets are registered and you have up to January 1st. This uh, recommendation, would you support this? Yes. Okay. Just so, a comment, Madam, comment, Madam Mayor, we're going to enforce bylaw after. I mean, are they going to go from door to door to see if your, your, your pet is registered? <sighs> Um, it, you know what, Cosi Leo, we already had this bylaw in existing in the past, and uh, basically they were responding to complaints. So it won't change the situation, uh, even if we change the numbers pertaining to zoning. So, okay, proposed amendment for January 1st. And for residents of R3 and R4 that we... I, find a mechanism to have some type of uh, media coverage to let them know that the number of pets is going to be lowered, but they're grandfathered, but they need to make sure their pets are registered. Good. Okay, all in favor? Yep. Carrie. <sighs> okay. Okay. Um, we do have a closed meeting, Réunion Riclou, but I'm going to keep the mayor's report very short. Um, I just take this opportunity to um, inform everyone that um, I wanted to highlight the initiative from the Near North District School Board that they've put a video together that they're going to be disseminating to uh, their schools pertaining to uh, Bullying Prevention Week, which is a provincial initiative that's going to be taken next week. Uh, there was a coordinated effort by uh, various mayors and their chief of Nipsing First Nation uh, in putting this video together, and it's going to be released publicly. So just to provide you with a heads up. Um, also, good news. And I'm sure that all members of council are aware of this information. When we got um, uh, the information from uh, AMO pertaining to the Ontario uh, Municipal Partnership Fund, uh, the portion for West Nipissing, uh, we are not receiving less than what we got last year. We will be receiving an increase, and if I'm not mistaken, within the range of nearly $80,000. But we're going to be provided that update uh, when we do uh, start uh, budget deliberation. So on that note, uh, we need to conclude the open meeting to proceed in closed session uh, to deal with two issues that we have for closed session item. Um, mover and a seconder, please. Conseiller Yvon, Conseiller Léo. Moved by Councillor Duhame and seconded by Councillor Mallet. It resolved that we proceed into closed meeting is authorized under Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act to discuss the following. A proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of lands by the municipality with regard to Pramad Zulak and litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board with regard to a property claim on Riverfront Drive. 
Those in favor? Carried. Adapte. I need to just turn off the YouTube and restart the recording for the other meeting.